In an unusual year, one constant endures, whether in your backyard or in the shadow of the Wasatch Range. Football on Thanksgiving. Today at Maverick Stadium in Logan, Utah, the Utah State Aggies host the New Mexico Lobos on Thanksgiving Day 2020. And hi, everybody. Alex Faust and Petros Papadakis here with you. It's been a challenging year for a lot of football programs, a challenging year for Utah State. New head coach, personnel moving on, and that includes at the quarterback position where they're going to try to piece something together today. They've had a rough year, and this is a proud program without a doubt. Like you said, Jason Shelley left the team. The quarterback was dismissed. That means Andrew Peasley is going to get the start. He was in quarantine last week, would not have started versus Wyoming, but he is their choice. Just a sophomore, not really a pocket passer, but a nimble guy who can get competitive out there and get some juices flowing again for the Aggies. Uh, yeah, and for the Lobos of New Mexico, some signs of life last week against Air Force and for Bobby Cole. If he gets going, it'll be a huge difference. They need to start the game with Bobby Cole moving the football from the running back position. He embodies the personality of the head coach, Danny Gonzalez, and the defensive coordinator, his mentor, Rocky Long. He does everything right in meetings, handles himself the way they want a Lobo in the modern times to handle himself, and he's a physical presence out there. He can demoralize the Aggies if they give him the chance. It's been a tough year for both programs, but one thing is for sure, someone will walk out of here with their first win of the season. Kickoff from Logan is next. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Rocket Mortgage. Maverick Stadium, Logan, Utah. And a pretty early winter's day, all things considered. Just a nick above freezing at kickoff but otherwise beautiful on this Thanksgiving day. Hope everybody at home is having a great holiday. Danny Gonzalez and the New Mexico Lobos who have been nomads to a large degree this year, basing their operations in Las Vegas. It's been a challenging campaign, but the best thing for them, Petros, zero positive COVID tests. Nothing. They've been not around anybody. Danny Gonzalez has uh, three weeks left of that routine at the hotel, and there is Frank Miley, the interim coach for Utah State, who came in when Coach Anderson decided to step down mutually with the front office or uh, athletic department of the Aggies. Yep. Three games into the season, and Utah State clearly not where they wanted it to be, but personnel changes, challenging year. Nonetheless, both teams at 0-4, one of them will no longer be winless. New Mexico won the toss. They choose to receive. And maybe it is to get Bobby Cole going. An offense that, when clicking, was able to put up some decent yardage against Air Force last week. All underman Utah State defense here. A short kick taken at the eight-yard line and a run back up the gut by Chad Alexander. He'll take it out to the 27-yard line, and that is where Trey Hall will begin. A little scrum after the tackle is made. But Trey Hall back up to Tavaka Tuioti, who I thought looked better as the game went along, and, and talking with Danny Gonzalez, they thought about the same thing. They expect growth every week with Trey Hall. He's an athletic guy. He, he's been in the program now three years as a redshirt sophomore. And he can make some throws from the opposite hash, and he's also very athletic. But they really need to get that run game with Bobby Cole going first. Here is Cole. Gets the first carry of the game, and that's a three-yard gain on first down. The offense for the Lobos, they have experience up front with Teton Saltis, who had started 25 consecutive games for the Lobos until November 14th, and they have a bit of a change up front. Jordan Kress, the top receiver this season, not available today. Instead, it's Emmanuel Logan Green getting the first catch of the game, but he's tackled for a loss of five. Defense for Utah State. Troy Leffridge left the program, entered the transfer portal, so things are shaken up there, mostly in the secondary. A.J. Vompachon is their leading tackler this season. Kevin Metzenheimer's made some big plays as well. We'll keep an eye on Shaq Bond. 
We had an interception against Fresno State in Utah State's last game. Third down and nine for the Lobos. As Hall gets chased down, throws across his body, and it lands well out of play. It's a three and out in the first series for the Lobos. Yeah, that front three that we just showed for Utah State, very gap sound, probably the strength of their football team. And they brought a little bit of a blitz. Uh, Vigilant, the running back, was unable to pick it up. And that forced Hall to have to scramble and throw it away. Very good start at home for the Aggies. Three and out for New Mexico. They wanted to avoid that. New Mexico was just four of 13 last week on third down against Air Force. And they lamented some key miscues. They had a chance to climb back into that game. But for Utah State, well, they haven't played in a couple weeks. They were supposed to play Wyoming last week, and it might have been a good thing in some ways to get their personnel set. They had a couple of extra days of practice with, you mentioned Jason Shelley leaving the program. Jalen Warren is out, their top running back. So some personnel issues to sort out in front of Andrew Pisa. They just got to get some positive feelings going uh, in this program. They are not used to being in this position as far as a coaching change with a dismissal. Most of the time, if somebody leaves Utah State who's the head coach, it's because they're going for a, a bigger opportunity. They're used to having a lot of success here. Beasley, pocket collapsing, finds his way through, cracks a couple helmets, and picks up five on first down. There's the lineup for Utah State. Dimitri Ali'i Foa, the senior center. One of the most experienced guys for the Aggies offense. And Devontae Henry Cole, who we expect to get more touches this week. Well, he came with Shelley, did Cole. Henry Cole came from Utah with Jason Shelley to kind of inject some life into this Aggies offense. And he's the only one left finishing the season. And he's starting today. On second down, Peasley steps up, and Peasley trying to sidestep his way past Devin Sanders is brought down after a three-yard gain, and it's a third and short. Sanders, a senior linebacker. Lobo's defense, they're without Elmer Pounty, they're without Adam Gay. So they're a little bit hampered at the nose tackle position. Brandon Shook racked up a ton of tackles last week. And we've really liked the look for Tavian Combs, who may get some action as the game goes along. Nico Bolden as well. All right, we are in Logan, Utah, Adam, as the Utah State Aggies look to pick up their first win of the season, a third and short for Utah State. They'll convert on third and two. Devontae Henry Cole getting the pitch out into the flat. The Aggies. Boy, they had a challenging year. New head coach, interim head coach, Frank Maley. They are without their quarterback they started the season with. They're without their top running back to begin the year. Somebody, though, has got to walk out of this game with their first win of the year. Both of these programs are really, really desperate for a victory, but also very happy to be able to compete today and just to kick the ball off, which feels like the victory in and of itself, especially uh, for the Aggies. First down for Utah State at the 41, and Peasley airs it out down the middle, and that should be a pass interference. No flag on the field and no argument for Savon Scarver as we take a look at our keys to the game brought to you by Farmers Insurance. Looked like Tony Collier had a hold of him there, but uh, did not end up being that way. Look at the keys to the game for the Utah State offense. Fire up that kitchen. Get it going. Show them that you are not sunk. Get that offense moving. And you saw him just take a shot for New Mexico's defense. Cause indigestion. We talked to Danny Gonzalez a whole lot about 11 hats to the ball in a bad humor. And you can see their physical nature in that Rocky Long scheme already in this game. This pass is caught on second down. We'll bring up a third and manageable. The first catch of the day for Derek Wright. Pickup of six, third and four upcoming. The first couple throws uh, Peasley had in the game, he just did not want to sit in the pocket at all. Took off and got some positive yardage. Now that the game 
has gone on a little bit for the sophomore out of Oregon. He's been able to deliver the ball. Took a shot downfield, showed New Mexico that they will stretch it out. Another third down. Last time they went to a running back dump off pass to Henry Cole. We'll see if they do that again. Just three of 15 against Fresno State two weeks ago. A little pitch to Henry Cole, who gets past the line to gain. And is into Lobo territory. Pickup of eight, a first down for the Aggies. Well, that feels like a Thanksgiving present. A pitch like that with all that air under it. Look at that. Oh, Eric Crouch, Scott Frost, where are you? Beautiful option pitch, and Cole knows what to do with it. Nice creative call for Coach Schramm, the offensive coordinator for Utah State, on third down. It's about to Henry Cole. Graduate transfer from Utah. 73 carries, or 73 yards on 11 carries against Fresno State two weeks ago to lead the Aggies. And here's Henry Cole again, lowers his shoulder, knocks over his man, Latavian Beaton. And Henry Cole with a physical run to set up second and short. Yeah, Beaton's gonna come in with a shoulder. And Henry Cole, who's only 5'11", under 200 pounds right there. Nice collision with Beaton who is unable to wrap up. Physical run by Henry Cole, and Utah State set a tone here early. A very manageable second down for the young quarterback. New Mexico, prior to the Air Force game, had one of the best run defenses in the nation, but it's guarding against pass plays that's been trouble. Peasley takes off again, slides, and then gets hit hard. Dante Martin came in to deliver the blow, and that may result in a penalty. I thought he was a little late on the slide. We'll see if he ducks his head. I mean, that was a quarterback run play, and he did become a runner, and then just kind of slides right at the sticks. He tucks the ball there, past the sticks, and slides. There's no helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact there. I mean, he just hits that looks like he hits the chest of Martin. Could be reviewed for targeting just based on the oh, way absolutely. that he went after the head, but. After the play, personal foul with targeting. Number eight, defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. The previous play is under review. So they just want to confirm that it is worth an ejection to Dante Martin. And I don't know, after the play, I, that must have been, uh, he must have misspoken there because it was certainly during the play. Yeah, I agree. And there is a duck of the head, but it looks like the only thing that hits the actual, anything on Andrew Peasley is the, the shoulder there. I could see the targeting call because of the head being ducked there. But removing him from the game, Martin, eh, that'd be tough. All right, Dean Blandino, our rules analyst, is with us. And a happy Thanksgiving, first of all, to you, Dean. And uh, what, do, what do we think here of this play? Happy Thanksgiving, guys. So they said after the play, Peasley slide. So once he begins his slide, it's over at that point. He becomes a defenseless player. So it is a late hit. Now the question becomes, do we have targeting? Is the defender attacking with force to the head or neck area? There is some contact. If you watch this shot, it looks like the right shoulder of the defender to the side of the head of Peasley. It does look like it's forcible contact. So again, that's the decision they're going to have to make. Is he attacking? Is it forcible? And, uh, and it is to the head neck area of a defenseless player. Did the slide look a little late to you, Dean? I mean, it seemed like he was already in a tackling position, ready to make a play on a runner when, when the slide began. That, that's the hard part about that slide. You always want your quarterback to slide early. But remember, once he starts the slide, it's over. The defender has to do everything within his power to lay off that contact to the head neck area. Copy that. All right. So even though they have been giving himself up. Let's see the call here. After review, the targeting, there is no foul for targeting. The personal foul stands. It will be first down. Yeah. All right. 
I think we can all be happy with that. Number eight can remain in the game. Not that it matters if we're happy or not, but oh. I think the slide was a little too late to remove Dante Martin from the game. So far, I really like the way Utah State has come out and called plays. Coach Dave Schramm has done a good job of getting Peasley comfortable. There's Frank Miley, interim head coach. Not the first time he's been the interim head coach at Utah yeah. State, but certainly every one of those situations has been unique. This one may be the most unique. So after the penalty, ninth play of the drive, and this will be a four-yard gain on first down and a first touch for Lake Makakona, freshman from Sandy, Utah. Give him three on first down. A tackle made by Joey Noble, who was certainly disruptive against Air Force last week. A lot of twists, a lot of stunts that Rocky Long likes to run with his defense. Noble, a little bit of an undersized defensive end, but fast, shows up a lot in an opponent's backfield. Second and seven. From the 13, Jet Sweep. And it's Henry Cole who will set up another third and short. Actually, he took this Wildcat snap. Well, Gentry takes the Wildcat yeah. snap, the uh, the other backup tailback with a tight end, Carson Terrell in the backfield with him, and then Henry Cole with two extra blockers yeah. comes around, and they create this third down situation and bring the starter back out. Really creative play calling. Mostly with the run game to start things out for the OC Dave Schramm. We figured without Jalen Warren, we'd see some of John Gentry. And the first touch is he's taking a direct snap. There's Henry Cole again. Oh, delayed handoff there, and Henry Cole just ran into the pile for no gain. It'll be fourth down. They're trying to get a little bit of a zone sort of delay going with Henry Cole being a little patient, waiting for those offensive linemen to work. And the Lobos, just a better job of fitting up and creating no gaps for Henry Cole to kind of slither through and physically push like he has been this whole first drive. Right, so this will be a 27-yard field goal for Connor Coles. Only his second attempted field goal this year. And he'll bang it through. So Frank Miley's bunch able to convert some points out of the drive. They're on the board to start the game. All right, Fox Bet Super 6 has given away over $3 million. And now you can win cash prizes playing the Fox Bet Super 6 PBC Boxing Contest on Saturday, December 5th. Download the Fox Bet Super 6 app for free. Order the big fight. FoxSports.com slash PPV. Andrew Peasley, there's his backup today. Cooper Lega in front of him. It's a nice first drive. Really nice. And I thought, like we talked about, that a really good job was done getting him comfortable to start the game. He, he wants to run the ball. He wants to take a couple hits. And once they called a few of those, and once he scrambled away, he looked a little more comfortable sitting back in the pocket throwing, but they're, they're going to try to run it a lot in this game. A short kickoff, and Alexander takes it out to the 23. So a drive that chewed up about six minutes. New Mexico's defense was out there for a while. That was the theme of the first half of their game last week. They couldn't get their defense off the field, and three and outs on the offense didn't help. And then their defense really came to life mm -hmm. against did. Air Force in the second half, so they didn't look like they were out of gas, although certainly they were out there for enough plays to be out of gas. But on the road like this for the second week in a row, just getting your defense hammered like that against the run game is no way to go into a game, but a good job of only giving up the three points. Trey Hall, Bobby Cole, this group needs to start converting some first downs. What is the look here? And some motion in the backfield. Actually, it's Cole who gets a yard on first down. Tackle made by Dominic Tatum, the sophomore from Culver City, California. 
Tatum all the way back there from the safety position, and you see him coming up, wearing the number 23 and cleaning up the play. Always hanging around the line of scrimmage against a team like this that you know wants to be physical. A motion up front. Ball start, number 73, offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Cade Briggs, sophomore. Briggs gets going a little early there. He's been a good spot, though. Both tackles have played pretty well for the Lobos. Teton Saltes, who's uh, on every watch list on the right side, and Briggs over on the left. Three-man front here. I had to laugh at what Justice Tate was doing <laughs> that last play to draw on the move. That's a poor pitch. Ball is on the ground. It'll roll out and stay with the Lobos. Trey Hall got rid of that late, and it was at the shoe tops of Emmanuel Logan Green and almost resulted in disaster. Well, option football, especially between a quarterback and a pitch man, always does lend itself to put the ball on the carpet. Really well done forcing the pitch. And just poorly delivered. Was that Reed on the hit? Man, that was a really good hit by Reed coming up and forcing that pitch. Third and 10. And Hall has an opening. He'll get the first down. That's nice recognition on the option for Hall, gain of 12. And maybe a little bit of the same on the other side of the ball for the Lobos. Get your offense going by getting that quarterback run going. Lead block by Bobby Cole. Pass intended here for Andrew Erickson, falls incomplete. Second down. New Mexico trying to snap a 13-game losing streak. This dates all the way back to last season, second longest in the nation. Illegal substitution. Defense, number 95, the 12th man did not get off the field. Five-yard penalty, first down. Marcus Moore, defensive lineman, late in getting off. So a good job by Trey Hall getting that snap off and recognizing that, using a little pace to get five yards after the first down. Looks like New Mexico's getting some offensive momentum going here in the first quarter. Cole in the backfield on a first and five. Hall steps up, fires downfield. He has Erickson, who was well covered. Shaq Bond draped all over him. Incomplete pass, second down. Well, he really loaded up to get to Andrew Erickson, who really is the best option on the perimeter without Jordan Kress for the Lobos. But Shaq Bond was there. Right into double coverage. Bond over the top, Lampkin under. Well done by the Aggies. But you get five yards on first down, why not take oh, yeah. the shot? And now you get Colgo. Just a hair shy of midfield. Moves the sticks, fresh set of downs for the Lobos. Bobby Cole, redshirt junior out of Chatsworth, California. Coming into this game with 45 carries. They say he runs with a little darkness in his heart, <laughs> which is a good thing. 96 rush yards against Hawaii, 90 against Nevada, but a season low 29 last week. I have a feeling that'll change today as he crosses midfield, tackled by A.J. Vompachuk, leading tackler for the Aggies. The more Cole can get positive yardage and the team can see Cole get positive yardage, and they have another pretty physical back in Nathaniel Jones who will also th see, the more you'll see huffing and puffing from that Aggie defense and the more Trey Hall can start to become comfortable as the backup New Mexico quarterback forced into duty. It's Cole again. Boy, he can be physical on the move. Vampachon got in the way again. But Cole right now is feeling it in the early going. And Vampachon is a very experienced young player. And he ended up on his back on that play with Cole on top of him. Big third down here for the Lobos to try to stay onto the field. 
Cole checks out. Logan Green in motion. Beg your pardon, it's Patterson. This is Logan Green getting the catch and moving the sticks. Well, the Aggies only brought three, and they really like their front three, but the Lobos O-line does a good job of controlling that, giving Trey Hall plenty of time to be calm and deliver the ball accurately, let Logan Green run for it. First down. New Mexico varying the tempo here, as this is Bryson Carroll's first touch of the game. Didn't have a single one against Air Force last week. Rushed for 536 yards last season. That's another guy with starting experience, exactly right, as Shaq Bond has to come over and clean that up. They've done a good job getting the backs, the ball out of the backfield, taking some shots downfield to no avail. But right now, New Mexico's offense is working on time in the Aggies' territory. New Mexico got shut out last week, 28-0. They got into the red zone, or got into Air Force territory nine times. Didn't score once as this is Nathaniel Jones getting his first carry of the game. Dominic Tatum with the stop, third down coming. You're seeing the safeties have to come up and make a lot of plays on this drive on the Lobo running backs. That's something to keep an eye on for some balls being thrown over the top as we see Bryson Carroll back in the game. Yeah, Jones the true freshman and Carroll the redshirt junior. They're fairly deep at running back. There he is, Carroll, trying to drag the pile forward. He didn't get there. But probably the gray area of the field where you consider going for it. You know, when you have Carroll and Cole and Hall in the backfield on that situation, what, what you're doing is you have three ball carriers back there. It should go against Utah State, and it should give them the first down. Justice Tate was in the neutral zone. Was he induced? Yeah. They're having the argument right now. Might have been Austin Cook, the left guard, who pulled out early here. Ball start, number 56, uh, offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. You're right. Yeah, the left guard there, excuse me, Austin Cook with a little bit of jump, and that's what brought Tae over. Offense still on the field. Going to go for it here, fourth and six. And the final minute 50 and counting. The first quarter, Paul dropping back. Looking to the sideline, into coverage, and incomplete, but a flag comes in. Tatum was on top of Marcus Williams. And based on Trey Hall moving downfield, he believes this should go against the Aggies. Well, Bobby, yeah, the little, a little bit of blood on the, the, the right hand there. Wow. Pass interference, number 23, defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. And a mismatch there between the safety and the tight end, or at least Tatum felt like it was, because as you can see, both hands around the body of Marcus Williams. They did a pretty good job of protecting Trey Hall there, but he does take a hit at the end of the play. Good conversion and courage to go down the field on fourth and six. Hey, two for two on third down, and now one for one on fourth. As this throw, Goes into coverage again. A little bump, a little hip check on Bryson Carroll. Delivered by Elijah Shelton. No flag. Second down. Yeah, Carroll needed to keep coming uh, for that ball. It looked to me like he, he mistimed his jump a little early. That was a, a throwback pass, kind of trying to get Carroll on a wheel route, uh, moving the pocket with Trey Hall, and it was pretty well executed. Carroll, I thought, could have run under that at a different route. That's hard for a running back. Yeah. It's not a wide receiver out there with a catch radius, you know. <laughs> Here's Cole. The old school fullback bill, but he is gang tackled, able to at least get a yard. 
Bringing up third down. See the way Cole tries to fight for it. There's really not a lot of places he could put his foot in the ground there and cut up the field. Ends up just taking a stand on the sideline. And the clock's still running and what has been a pretty physical first quarter for both teams yes, offensively sir. kind of imposed their will. Remember how many licks Trey Hall took against Air Force last week? How physical their defense was. Utah State has brought some physicality this week. Well, that's been the identity of the Aggies. That's what the Lobos are trying to develop. Hall gets hit again, and his pass is nearly picked off. Tatum over the middle. Nathaniel Jones was the target, and Tatum nearly came up with the INT. Trey Hall again under pressure. They are not going to let him sit back there very often. Beg your pardon, Kyle Jarvis, the intended receiver. Well, this was the story, well, part of the story, at least, for New Mexico last week. 0 for 4 on field goals. And they're able to get this one through. A 39-yarder for Ben Gonzalo. Third kicker used this season. I believe. And that is Kyle Stapley, senior from Morgan, Utah in his home state, but not happy. The way that that drive ended. Resulting in a field goal. I, I gave you the wrong number there. Uh, I don't believe there's a nose tackle uh, that is capable of kick. I could be wrong. Uh, ben Gonzalez. Not this century. Not, not this one. <laughs> Donovan Murphy, the kicker for New Mexico, both wear 99 for the Lobos. That is the first career field goal for Murphy, who is 0 of 2 coming in. Well, they had a lot of trouble with it last week. There's no doubt about it. And they had a kicking competition this week, did the Lobos, and Murphy came out and made his first kick. There you go. 0 of 2 on extra points prior. One missed, one blocked against Utah State last year. So 39 seconds left in the quarter. And we're all knotted up. Here's Murphy to kick it off. Pooch kick. Will land short, glance off a of body, New Mexico, can they grab it? No. Oh, they were close. Makakona secures it for Utah State. It was nearly Lobo Ball. That's Pailake Makakona, who uh, made the play of the game so far. <laughs> to avert disaster on the pooch kick. This was perfectly executed by New Mexico. Yeah, they pooched it. That's why you do it, to cause a little bit uh, of confusion and a real fight for the ball right on the edge, and it could have gone either way, and at the end, it's Makakona who comes up with it. That would have been a very, very big bonus huh. for the Lobos after a nice long drive and tiring out the Aggies' defense, but Utah State prevails and not very bad field position. James Lewis nearly got it for the Lobos, but it is Aggie ball. Tied at three, 46 yards total offense for both teams. So far, Utah State Maybe marginally better, you think? Well, you know, I think defensively, you know, their front three and their 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 safeties really are athletic and fast to the football. And that's been the identity of Aggie football for a while. Offensively, I think their identity is still very up in the air. Oh, they can get Henry Cole going. Be nice again in the absence of Jalen Warren. Gets seven on first down. Jarek Reed, the tackle. Reed shows up a lot making plays, but again, uh, Lobo safeties, both sides of the ball having to come up and make plays on these running backs. Henry Cole doing a good job squirting that one through and creating a very manageable second down for Andrew Peasley, who's getting more and more comfortable. Let's see if they run him here. Final play of the quarter. Peasley to the perimeter, and he has his man Derek Wright. Nearing midfield, steps out to end the quarter. 
There is a flag here on the play. We'll see if this 15-yard gain stands up. You can see Peasley looks very comfortable throwing the ball on the move there, getting it down the field to his second option. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 11, defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Cameron Miller. We're going to have to extend the quarter for one untimed down. With the penalty here. It's hard because you know you got a quarterback that wants to run. And you see him pump fake it once. You, you think he's he's going to tuck it and run. And it looked like just a little bit of acceleration, a little bit of a buck on, on Peasley. But wouldn't have minded seeing that flag stay in the pocket yeah. as well. But we understand they're trying to protect that position. By the way, that's the longest pass play of Peasley's career. 15 yards, tack on more with the penalty. It's an untimed down to end the quarter. And the ball at the New Mexico 40. Peasley hands it off. Matacona up the guts. And inside the New Mexico 25 to wrap up the first. Under clear skies in Logan, Utah, on Thanksgiving night, 3-3 Aggies and Lobos. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Rocket Mortgage. Alex Faust, Petros Papadakis with you. Merlin Olsen Field in Logan, Utah. Maverick Stadium, the home of the Utah State Aggies. As they look to untie this game. 3-3 at the end of the first quarter. Both teams looking for their first win of the season. Both have had challenging circumstances to deal with this year. Very different ones. New Mexico marooned in Las Vegas. Utah State dealing with personnel and an interim head coach as this is attempted to be fit into a tight window. Double coverage. Jarek Reed was there. Devin Tompkins, the intended recipient. Well, right at the end of the corner, Peasley had his longest pass in the history of his career completed, so why not try to thread the needle right down the middle between two safeties? <laughs> Derek Wright almost had a shot at that. And the more and more confident this young man is getting, the better and better he looks. Although that was a dangerous throw, but looking better throwing the ball from the pocket. Beasley in trouble. Gets away from the first tackle, but not the second. Sacked by Dante Martin for a loss of two. And just the fact that he was able to step up in the face of that, a, a corner blitz. Uh, Rocky Long loves to bring everybody. You see edge players. There looks to be about an eight-man mm. <laughs> rush coming after him. And it, it looked for a second like Peasley was going to get away, but nice closing speed by Dante Martin, the freshman out of Oxnard, California, for that man's defense. Rocky Long, a legend in this conference, this school. San Diego State, West Coast football as a whole, a real defensive genius. A chance to rebuild this program that was doing so well when he was at the helm. Peasley overthrows Justin McGriff by about 10 feet. Fourth down, and a field goal likely coming here for the Aggies. And after the roughing the passer, and a couple of very positive run plays. You see Peasley going to the sideline and talking to his offensive coordinator, Dave Schramm. Well done bowing the neck of the Lobos defense and forcing this field goal. 44 yards for Connor Coles, whose career long is 38. Kick is up and good. So Coles with a career-long 44-yarder, and the Aggies have the lead. Tomorrow, the Fort Myers tip-off continues. Number one, Gonzaga got by Kansas yesterday. They take on the Auburn Tigers, only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Great to hear you and Jim Jackson doing yeah. that great college hoops yesterday. A lot of fun. That's, that's my jam. That's where I got started here. And now we get some primetime football. The only game in town, Petros. They canceled the Steelers. Well, not canceled. They moved it to Sunday. We got the only game in town. 
Those are big seats in Logan for this one. Yes, Erland sir. Olsen Field. Hope you're having fun. Hope you're enjoying your Thanksgiving at home. From the five, this is Alexander. And Alexander lost his footing as he tried to make a move. There is a flag. Let's see what this is all about. Utah State's first two drives of the game have resulted in two made field goals. First four games they played this year, just one field goal in total. During the return, holding number 88, receiving team. 10 yard penalty, first down. Timeout. That's Marcus Williams, usually a tight end, but on special teams, taking the penalty there. Lobos will have the ball in Logan when we come back. Millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Text play to the number on your screen to help keep kids in the game. Holding penalty sets back the Lobos all the way to their own 11. Trey Hall in the gun, rolls out to his left, throws, difficult catch made by Andrew Erickson. In front of the sideline, he'll get seven on first down and as Erickson makes his first catch of the ball game. Without Kress in this game, Andrew Erickson takes on a huge role. They need some downfield presence, and he is that guy, a possession-style receiver with some good speed, a former walk-on. Trey Hall, again, he is the backup quarterback. Tavaka to Ioti, still out with concussion-like symptoms. Three weeks as this is juggled by Logan Green in and out of his hands. An incomplete pass, setting up third and four. The UCF transfer just had that one come in a little hot off the arm of Trey Hall. Trey Hall really threw a fastball there. Kind of ate up Green. Well thrown ball. See what they can do on third down. Two for five tonight as Hall. Boy, did he get a great block. Found a little seam towards the end and added a little bit of yardage to the run. First down for the Lobos. Well, there's Bobby Cole right next to Trey Hall there. And you see him just leading through with a really strong physical block on Dominic Tatum, and that allows, allows Hall to slip through. Lobos working quickly. It's Erickson in the flat. Will reach the line to gain and get pulled down. Side a 45 yard line here. 13 yard gain. They're working the left side with the pass and the right side with the run so far on this drive. Get themselves out of the hole after a penalty. And Trey Hall looks pretty hot. Did see them very tempo last week, and they've done it here as well. To, to play tempo consistently or to get the defense on their heels, you got to get first downs. Logan Green met immediately. Try to get back to the original line of scrimmage, diving maybe a half yard across it. Jared Reed was there for the tackle. You see the bunch formation. They're trying to get a screen. But Jared Reed blows that screen up by diagnosing it and making a play on Green before he could get going. Logan Green led the Lobos with 64 yards receiving last week against Air Force. On second down, design play here. All option, Vigilant gets the first down, lowering his shoulder to knock down Shaq Bond. And the first touch for Davon Vigilant this evening. That's some of first. Trey Hall more comfortable. They go back to this play, even though the errant pitch a little bit earlier uh, in the first quarter of the game. That time, a nice pitch, and no one there for the pitch man. Aggies did a good job of forcing the pitch, but no one was there to pick up Vigilant before he could pick up the first down. Nice drive. 
Vigilant in the hip pocket of Trey Hall here. As the Lobos get into Aggie territory. Fake the pitch, throw over the middle, and Marcus Williams makes the grab. Another fresh set of downs for the Lobos. Like the play call by offensive coordinator Derek Warheim, the pitch action, and they've run that play before just to create a little bit of a seam there to get the ball to Marcus Williams, who's turned and facing Trey Hall. And Trey Hall very sharp so far on this drive. A good answer after the penalty on the kickoff return. 15-yard pickup. And the Lobos are clicking offensively. There's Nathaniel Jones, the freshman, who has turned into Nevada's or New Mexico's number two rusher, shared the bulk of the carries last week. And we liked how physical he was, he and Bobby Cole. Physical, no doubt. You see that big neck on the freshman back, but also patient. That was a good display of patience there before he saw the hole and attacked the line of scrimmage. Bobby Cole, the bell cow, back in the game. We got three backs in the backfield, all that can run the ball, including the quarterback. New Mexico's log. There are four longest plays of the game on this drive. Play clock winding down. Hall hands it off. A little pirouette from Vigilant. And he'll get within a yard and a half of the line to gain. Picks up three, third down and short. Vigilant, the junior, has been involved. They tried some misdirection. Bobby Cole taking an outside route, trying to hold the linebackers on the edges so Vigilant could get inside. And a little spin with no one there. It's a good game. Big third down here. What was this? Looks like they <laughs> called a shift, and Te'i just <laughs> came across the line of scrimmage. Just followed him along there. What, are going to switch jerseys? <laughs> a little pickup scrimmage? Outside, number 54, defense with contact. Five-yard penalty. Result is a first down. Wrong number. It was just as Tate 51 in blue. It's a shift for New Mexico, so Hall is going to call the shift, and all three tight ends in the game start moving, and Tate took it as a snap, not watching the ball, and cost his team a first down. From the Utah State 15. Aggies rush for Hall. Couple of head fakes, and Hall is inside the Utah State five. He's pretty shifty. It looked like he was going to pitch it and then slipped. And once he regained his footing, there was no one there to tackle him. There he get forced the pitch is Shaq Bond, but he doesn't make a play. Moving quickly here, Vigilant gets the call. He's tackled in the backfield. Nick Hedinger coming up to make the play. The Graduate transfer from Utah. Yeah, the previous play, Shaq Bond just did a flyby of Trey Hall and, and never really forced the pitch. Trey Hall just kind of stumbled and, and took it forward for a nice game. And you see the Aggies are tired yeah. defensively. They, they've taken some pretty big body blows. We mentioned at the beginning of the day for New Mexico how their offense, little bursts here and there. This is their longest drive of the season. Most put together drive of the year. Can yeah. you imagine that? 85 yards. Looking to punch it in here. It's Hall. Gets a block. Gets to the goal line. He's in for the touchdown. Hall has paid the price on multiple occasions the last two weeks, but he gives the Lobos the lead here, their first lead of the ball game. Now that look, one looks like it hurt him, didn't it? Uh, but. That is the best, and it looked like it took a little bit out of Shaq Bond, too. One of the leaders on this Aggies team. When they can create numbers and have Cole in there as a lead blocker and the quarterback as the runner, it really is difficult for the defense to match up. You see Miley with the very physical hit, Keena Miley, right at the goal line on Trey Hall. Awfully tight here. Yeah, very close to see if he was in the end zone, but. 
Well called play, well executed in the quarterback run game. We'll see what kind of football it took out of Hall. Well, this New Mexico team has had some moments this year. They led Nevada 10-0 early in the second quarter. Wolfpack team that many review consider to be the touchdown is under review. The best in the Mountain West this year. They're going to review this to make sure it crossed the goal line, or at least broke the plane. Either way, 89 yards. Really no hiccups for the Lobos on this drive, and this is what they think they're capable of. Well, let's look at that knee. That's going to be hard to tell there if the knees were down. Really, really impactful hit right there on the one-inch line. And Hall was just down right at the spot, but did his momentum carry him over before the knees were down? That's what they're looking at right now. Well, all I can say is we've had with cameras that are a little bit off, so that aren't positioned right on the line, wherever it is, whether it's a line to gain of the goal line in this case, it's really hard for referees to overturn something that was called on the field. Yeah, if you call it a touchdown on the field, and, and that's the, the look we got, that it's going to be very difficult to overturn. There, there's no doubt about that. It's a very close play either way. Let's see if the knee is down. Yeah, that's the right knee that goes down before the left. And that's before he really kind of makes his lunge over the goal line. As Miley made the play, the freshman. Trey Hall has a rushing touchdown and a receiving touchdown this year. Looking to complete the hat trick. These are synced up. So once you sync them up and you see that right knee is down there, I can see this coming back. And back to an end goal situation. I think that syncing up those two cameras yep. and really great work by our guys being able to do that tells the tale that this was not a touchdown. And, and if they take it back, it'll be conclusive. Yeah, it'll be third and goal at the Utah State one if they bring it back. Here's the call. After the review, the runner was down at the half yard line. Clock operator, please put 8.22 on the game clock, the clock will start on my ready. Timothy Davis making the call. So I'll try it again. This is huge for the Lobos, right, oh, Alex? Yeah, we were talking about how this is the best sustained drive they've had all year. And they've done it to overcome some adversity. It started out with a penalty on special teams, which is really difficult to overcome when you're backed up in your own territory. They've marched down with some very good creative play calling. We saw Trey Hall take a brutal hit from Miley right there on the play that was overturned. What do they have on third down in store for us? All right, so here's the moment for Trey Hall looking for his first rushing touchdown of the season. To give New Mexico the lead. Cole gets the call. He's in. Let's go. Come on, baby. Come on. It's the second for Bobby Cole this year. And after all that, New Mexico finally has the lead. I hear that adulation. You know, they know that this is a, a huge step forward for the offense. Really well done with the push. Isaac Gutierrez. It's kind of the pin in the backfield that Cole used as his read. Wound it back and finished the drive with a touchdown, just like the Lobos needed. Donovan Murphy. Bangs it through for the extra point. And the New Mexico Lobos is this odyssey without a victory.
Coming to an end on the road tonight. They have the lead. Sunday, MVP candidate. I think he's the leading candidate for MVP. Kyler Murray leading the Cardinals against Cam Newton and the Patriots. So the Giants take on the Bengals. Other regional action as well. Check your local listings for the game in your area. All part of the Fox Football Feast. Alex Faust, Petros Papadakis here with you. 12 plays, 89 yards. Variety in how they did it. And Bobby Cole punched it in at the end. Well, we were just talking about it at the break. Uh, last week, they were in the opponent's territory nine times with no points against Air Force. New Mexico able to pull it off. Tonight, they are two for two with the ball in their opponent's territory. So Utah State back to work here. And for Andrew Peasley, who so far tonight hasn't thrown the ball a ton. He's more of a mobile quarterback. Three of six, 24 yards. They've called some plays for him to throw the ball down the field. They, they've done a good job mixing that in, but I think his legs are the most dangerous things to the Lobos defensively. But remember how much they can punish you physically once you do get past the line of scrimmage. We saw a lot of that last week. Fonte Henry Cole sets up in the backfield here. As they try to get the personnel right here. What have we here? So there was no announcement downstairs, but it's been passed up to us that they are going to have to re-kick this after an illegal procedure That's on the kickoff. When you pooch it. There's a little bit of a different track to the ball for the kicker, and it could mistime things okay. uh, for everybody. And that's what New Mexico's been doing thus far, is the pooch kicks. They've had some success with it. Yeah. Well, they nearly got a takeaway already. Yeah. That time it backfired. Yeah. You got to do the whole kickoff thing again and do it all over again. So they'll move it back five yards. Kick from the 30. Plus, Savon Scarver back there is the top kickoff returner in the Mountain West. 11 in Navy Blue. Instead, it's Henry Cole who picks it up. And Cole dodges a tackle. Or he's pushed back the 30. If it does wind up in the hands of Scarver at some point tonight on a kickoff, look out. Already has a kickoff return for a touchdown this year. No doubt that looks like they're actively trying to kick it away from him. So now Peasley is back to work. Start from his own 30. Henry Cole gets the call, and Cole stutter step and is able to pick up a first down. Henry Cole, the leading rusher for the Aggies so far. Well, they bring a run blitz right there between the center and the guard with Cameron Miller, and he gets into the backfield. But Henry Cole's able to bubble out and outrun him and find some space on the edge. He's been very nifty as the senior out of Boca Raton, Florida. I thought he had the first down, but uh, Spot put him back a yard. Uh, 38 is where they put the ball. This time it's Elion Noah, a freshman running back out of Portland, Oregon. He'll get the first. And that's a similar setup to what we've seen the Lobos do. You got Peasley who can run it, Makakona who can run it, and Noah, all three guys who are very capable running the ball from behind the line of scrimmage all in the backfield together. So you're not running a triple option, but the defense almost has to play it like it's a triple option because any three of those guys could take the ball very physically toward the line of scrimmage. Yeah. 
Stella again tries to dive his way through the pile. No gain. Second down. Utah State's 0-4. They've had a tough schedule. Faced the consensus top three teams in the league the first three weeks. Boise, San Diego State, Nevada. Then the always difficult Fresno. Returning some starters in the offensive line, but obviously they're without their quarterback they started the season with. Jason Shelley dismissed from the team. Jalen Warren, their top tailback, out with injury this week. And it'll be a third and short as Scarver makes the grab, a gain of six. That's a guy they need to get more involved on the perimeter, not just in the return game. That's his fourth reception of the year. Scarver, you're talking about guys that have left. Uh, Devin Tompkins, transfer portal, junior wide receiver, one of their best guys. He's their leading guy. So a, a lot of ups and downs for the Aggies. And in modern football, people come and go in a program all the time. But Utah State, not quite used to this kind of dissension that they faced this year. And Frank Miley doing a great job trying to keep these guys together going forward toward a common goal. It's coming. Quick throw, and it's caught by McGriff. He'll turn up field, and McGriff up the seam is deep into New Mexico territory. The biggest target on the field, six foot six, 220 pounds out of Tampa, Florida, Justin McGriff. Wearing number 10, big number 10, just turns and faces the quarterback, finds a little spot in that zone, almost gives it up with Jarek Reed causing the fumble there. Looks like the ball moved a little bit, but Reed not trying to tackle him, just trying to dislodge the ball. Goes for another seven yards. 29-yard catch and run. Longest play of the game. Longest pass for Andrew Peasley in his emerging career. Here is Noah. They get four on first down. Maybe unbeaten coming up to make the tackle. Really good solo tackle by Beaton. Both of these teams really trying to perpetuate a physical mentality, a mentality of making the opponent earn it, especially when they break the line of scrimmage in the contact zone. 187 pounds is beaten. He put all of that on the ball carrier. Direct snap coming here for Gentry. He'll take it. Wildcat set, and it didn't look like he had his balance as he started his run. Met immediately by Beaton. So the second time Beaton comes up with a big tackle. Third down and long coming up for the Aggies. They try to run an edge play uh, out of the Wildcat, and Gentry just a little slow and then stumbles. And that play was doomed from the beginning if Beaton doesn't make that play. Brandon Shook looks like he will. Shook had 19 tackles last week against the Air Force. Granted, they ran the ball down their throats, but even so, Shook was out there a while. Fake the handoff, throw to the outside, a diving grab made. That's a tough completion to Taylor Compton, the freshman. And on third and long, the Aggies are able to move the sticks. Taylor Compton is a guy that has stepped up. Uh, Peasley really had to adjust his motion there and throw a bit of a sidearm to slide that into Compton, who's a local hero in Logan and a real leader on this team. Yeah, I beg your pardon, a senior from Logan. He looks like a freshman. <laughs> Baby faced, yeah, I guess you could say. They all look younger every year. But a really nice play, as, as you said, this career is emerging. Every long pass for Peasley is the longest of his career because he's really starting to see his first action. You're going to see that ball just slid right through a very narrow throwing lane on the left side there and down. for Compton to get the ball and to keep it away from Nico Bolden, who's a linebacker on the defense. Also very well done by Peasley, recognizing the mismatch between a linebacker and one of his best receivers and delivering that ball as they look at it officially to see if he really did get down to get it.
I think every series here, we have added a little bit of a dimension here for Peasley this time. It'll be a tough completion if this indeed stands. Dean Blandino's with us. What did you think, Dean? Yeah, two things. Is it a catch? And it does look like he completed the catch. Then there's the spot. The line of gain was the eight-yard line. And it looked like when he caught it, he might have been just short. Not a great angle. But if you watch, as soon as he catches it, now he's down. Does that ball make the eight-yard line? Uh, I don't know if there's enough to overturn it. But again, that's what they're looking for. I mean, based on, uh, we've mentioned this a couple times here, you don't have a precise look. Gotta keep After it. review, the ruling on the field stands this call. First down. Seems to be the guidance given. Have to try to <laughs> scrutinize <laughs> microscopic differences. Good job of getting down and getting that ball. Wildcat again. Gentry. And Gentry navigates for a hole. And is down to the three yard line. Gain of five, and Utah State is knocking on the door with three minutes to go in the half. Jake Saltonstall had a chance to make that play in the backfield and just couldn't. And we've seen some pretty purposed running from about four different backs for the Aggies. There's Salt and Stahl, one of the stalwarts on this New Mexico D-line as they try to rebuild this defense as the identity of the football team. Second to goal. Peasley in the eye. Peasley looking for the edge. Peasley dives. Did he get it? New Mexico saying that he fumbled it out of the end zone, and yeah. it's going to be a touchback the other way. No signal as of yet. First down. Now they call it a touchback. And there he is. Wow. Really yep. stretching with that right arm. He got it around the pylon, but that is the call on the field. And what was his feet or any part of his legs out of bounds? Yeah. Those will be the questions. That, that's a really good look at it. And it almost looked like he wrapped that ball around the, as you There's see the reaction. Here. Well, now they're going to review to see if this is a score. I mean, oh. there, are, there are three different things here in play. Well, if he does fumble it, if the call stands, it's a touchback and New Mexico's ball going the other way. Oh, that does look like that ball is out, but is his body out of bounds? His foot is. <laughs> Yeah, that left foot looks like it's out maybe before the ball slips out of the fingers and thumbs on the right hand. What an effort for the goal line, but right. man, is it ill-advised. Well, but it, if he's out, if he's out before the ball leaves his hand, this will stay with Utah State. Yeah, it looks like he's touching it. If he has control and he's out of bounds, then they're going to call it right there on the one-inch line for the Aggies. I remember a play a few years back with Deshaun Jackson uh, at Cal up at Oregon at Autzen Stadium. It was very much like this, just a bang, bang play on the goal line. The ruling on the field of a touchback is under further review. Dean, we're calling on you again here. Yeah, guys, long time no speak, <laughs> so. Our man Peasley here, he's gotten us involved in a couple of tight ones. The issue here is going to be, was he out of bounds before he lost control of the football? Or if he's, watch that left foot, it's going to be this left foot right there. If he's touching, even touching the football at that point, it's out of bounds at All that right. point. So again, really close, ruled a fumble and a touchback on the field. So it's going to have to be obvious. And I just don't know, let's take a look at this angle. Looks like Looks he still down. has control on that on that shot right there. It looks like the hand is still on the football. It's close, but if it were me making this decision, I would I would bring this back. Turn it over. You know they don't like the to. ruling on the field yeah. of a touchback stands this call. Wow. First down. Well, you know, Dean, they, they don't like to to rule out or overturn calls on the field, so they keep the one here. 
Yeah, and if it's not obvious, and the replay official has to get to 100%, and, and obviously they didn't get there, and they let it stand. All right. So, what a turn of events. New Mexico has the ball back. Goodness. State Farm halftime coming up next. Tom Verducci on November football and so many memories that have been made in November. Urban Meyer with his playbook, two minute offense. It's coming up in the State Farm halftime. These guys are outside the stadium. I'm assuming they have um, legal use of that device and are qualified to use it. Oh, come on. In Utah, in Logan, <laughs> absolutely. So after the touchback, and we still are scratching our heads over that one. Ball's at the 20-yard line. Trey Hall steps up. Boy, the patience to get through that seam, get the first down before he's ridden out of bounds. Tackle made by Dominic Tatum, but not after another nice run. 17 yards for Trey Hall. Trey Hall takes a lot of hits, but protects the ball very well. Breaks two tackles at once, a third, and then finally gets cleaned up at the end. But this guy has been physically beaten up, and he keeps coming. I'm impressed with his courage. Speaking of two-minute offense, two minutes to go in the half here. New Mexico leading 10-6. See how they can build on the situation that they created for themselves with the turnover and the long drive for a touchdown earlier in the game. Boy, how important might it be to score here? Utah State will have the ball to begin the second half. Menninger. Coming up to make the tackle on Bobby Cole, second and nine. That was a big tackle there to create a off schedule down situation. One of four transfers from Utah on this Utah State roster. No hurry yet, New Mexico. All three of their timeouts still available. for this blitz off the edge. Hall's going to heave it, and it is incomplete. Intended for Elijah Queen, who's in the lineup with Jordan Cress unavailable due to a foot injury, third and nine. Well, the corner blitz is recognized and starts coming, and, and what Trey Hall needs to do as that corner bears down on him is, is get the ball out immediately to Queen. But Queen didn't recognize the blitz and show himself to Hall at all and just went on running his route. So Hall did have one-on-one -on -one coverage to Queen, but had to throw it under some serious duress and still had a shot. Another throwing down here for the Lobos, who would be loathe to give the ball back. Hall has his man near midfield. And it's Cedric Patterson with his first catch of the game. Clock moves inside a minute. Sophomore out of Crosby, Texas. Balin is quarterback out. Good looking throw. Gain of 11 as Hall throws across his body and has Anselm Ume dives for the sideline near the line to gain. He comes up a yard short, second down and one. Clock stops with 48 seconds to go. Reed making the tackle for the Aggies. Lobos working quickly here. I'll let things breathe when the clock stops. Corner blitz coming. Paul picks it up. And he's hit as he throws. Ball is loose. Rule to fumble. Covered up by the Lobos. Henninger got him. And New Mexico will keep the ball and wind up the half. See, the blitz comes and they pick up the blitz, but they don't block Henninger, who is able to come and make the play. A few big plays he's made here on this drive. Timeout called. We'll step aside. Built for Success is presented by Rocket Mortgage for the personalized playbook on home loans. Rocket can. Well, earlier, New Mexico had an 89-yard, 13-play drive, ate up almost six minutes of clock, and it gave them the lead. And, and this is the kind of offensive production they've been looking to create to play complementary football with that defensive identity they're also trying to create. They've been looking for that 
for weeks, and they were able to finally put one together in Logan, and now not a bad two-minute drill operating. And they're going to get a first down here. Maybe some more scoring in the offing. Two timeouts remaining, 25 seconds on the clock. It'll stop to move the chains. Marcus Williams, the tight end, making the grab. They move quickly, keeping the timeouts. Hall takes a shot in the coverage, and a flag comes in. Dante, excuse me, that is Mata Hola. Well, He's was this ball catchable is the first question. I mean, Pass that interference. Is Number six. Oh, yeah, that's catchable. Defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. Yeah. First down. Cam Lampkin back there for Utah State in coverage, and that's a costly error. Yeah, it just looked like he kind of hit him like a bumper car there. Didn't mean to make the contact. Hands came up immediately, knew he made a bad play. And another positive development for the Lobos here right before the half. 16 seconds, two timeouts, ball at the Utah State 24. Hall, five-step drop, ball batted at the line, falls incomplete. No whistle. Still no whistle. Utah State has it. And what have we here? There's your whistle. Yeah. Michael Anyawu oh, takes it all the way. But based on at least the naked eye, that looked like an incomplete pass. Well, it looked like they batted the pass down. I mean, uh, Trey Hall is, is in the pocket there, vigilant there, picking up the blitz. That's a forward yeah. pass right out of his hand, and it's batted down. That's, a, that's an incomplete, that's an incomplete pass. pass. I mean, on the one hand, I'm, I'm happy that let play continue just in case, but on the other, that should be. Well, because you didn't have to run all the way down to the well, other side. Of <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs> this should be fairly straightforward. Uh, how none of the officials on the field blow the yeah. whistle here is, is amazing. Holding. Defense. Ten yard penalty. Result. First down. Yeah, there's the signal. The previous the tip play right there. is under review. Uh, unless there was a little. So he's behind the play. He can't see necessarily whether that's a forward pass. There's, there's a defensive holding call on the play. So uh, if the play is ruled incomplete, they'll take the holding call and go with first down. Right. And I don't see how it could go any other way. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> just, would... I don't think I need Dean. I, I, I mean, <laughs> maybe oh. I do. Wow. That's, oh, he's, he's right. He's right down the hall, just waiting for us. Dean, am I? That's an incomplete pass, right? Yes. Okay. All right. We're not going every crazy. Every rule under the face of the sun, that's an incomplete uh, pass. Okay. Yeah. And and the big thing here is we're going to have the defensive holding penalty enforced. They're going to put some time back on the clock, probably 12 seconds when the ball hit the ground. So uh, the Lobos will get 12 seconds, and they'll get a first down out of this. Is it the, that the, the referee, because he was in back of the plays, that he couldn't see necessarily yeah. the hash where the ball lands yeah and it's not look all eight officials are not focused on that one aspect the referee obviously didn't get a good look at it we were able to see it it is a forward pass and uh, and that's what we replaced for yep all good appreciate it Dean see we still need him no absolutely <laughs> I just I mean I know they're not all looking at it but eight of them swallowed the whistle the on previous it. play was an incomplete pass right. clock operator please reset the game clock to 11 seconds the holding on the defense is a 10-yard penalty, results in a first down. No, no harm, no foul. We got it all sorted out. 11 seconds, still two timeouts for New Mexico. Now, based on the ball is placed, they will have a couple of good looks here. And leading 10-6 be interesting to see if we can get to the half without another review. I'm not sure we can do it. You're really trying to, to take Dean out of a job, aren't you? No, I love Dean. I just, <laughs> to me, it's an amazing 
thing that the whistle doesn't blow there. I mean, they teach you in football, they coach you to play to the whistle. Right. And it's a violent sport that you play to the whistle, and that's dangerous to not have a whistle in that situation, in my opinion. First down for the Lobos, screen pass. Whoa. If Zavion Steele had his head up, he may have had an opportunity to take that all the way. A lot of starting and stopping. Hard to get a rhythm with all those uh, play stoppages, and that's just a poor throw out to the edge. Such a poor show throw that Steele didn't expect it. Yeah. Seven seconds. Well, New Mexico has either been tied or led at halftime in three of their first four games. They will have a 13-6 lead here on the field goal for Murphy. 31-yarder. And now Murphy with a pair of field goals in this game for the Lobos. Well, offensively, it's night and day for the Lobos between last week and this week. Uh, they're able to take advantage of situations, make situations work for them, like the two-minute drill, uh, the biggest drive in their whole season uh, we witnessed. So some growth from the Lobos offensively on this drive, and, and we'll see what Peasley could do. He's not been bad in this game. We'll, we'll see what the return is like. <laughs> they pooch kicked it to try to keep it away from Scarver. State Farm halftime coming up next, but three seconds to sort out here. And save on Scarver. Top kick returner in the Mountain West. Tenth in the country in kick return yards. So a nine play, 66 yard drive. He had a couple penalties thrown in there for New Mexico. They were able to convert it into points. 13 6 the lead. Utah State will have the ball to begin the second half. There's Scarver in. It. Levin in blue and Devontae Henry Cole, seven in blue. Unless you kick it out of bounds, one of those two is going to have to run up and get it. I'll go for the sideline. And it will roll out. So they'll get the ball at the 40. What do you think? Would you take a knee? Would yes. You? Okay. I would in this situation with a with a Free new kick quarterback. Out of bounds. Kicking team number 99. The ball will be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. All right. <laughs> they have really avoided kicking it to Scarver. <laughs> have to do it again out of the halftime break. Andrew Peasley's first half, six of nine for 69 yards. Devontae Henry Cole, leading rusher with 31. Justin McGriff, leading receiver. And the Aggies will take it into the half, trailing 13-6. They will get the ball to start the second. And Frank Melee's, Melee's bunch will have the ball when we Return for the second half. State Farm halftime is coming up next. The Lobos with the lead in Logan, Utah. New Mexico leading Utah State 13 to six. Lobos trying to end a 13 game losing streak dating back to last season. And they had that one drive, 89 yards down the field. They made everything work with their offense. You know, they're really kind of a human interest story with the way that they're quarantined in Lake Las Vegas and the very interesting way that Danny Gonzalez and Rocky Long have gone about coming back to their alma mater. And it feels good seeing them finally put it all together and get an offensive drive going using a lot of quarterback run with Trey Hall and sort of their emotional leader, Bobby Cole, cleaning it up on the back end, and it looks like New Mexico is growing under Danny Gonzalez. Are they ready to snap the streaks? Second half is next. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Rocket Mortgage. Alex Faust, Petros Papadakis here with you. Beautiful Maverick Stadium. Wasatch range in the distance, maybe one of the most scenic spots in all of college football. First half numbers and the leading rusher for the Lobos, 
was their quarterback, Trey Hall. But it's Utah State that'll have the ball to begin the second half. And that guy, Andrew Peasley, really in his first action for Frank Miley, the head coach, has run the ball pretty well from the quarterback position, too. We thought that this would be uh, gnash your teeth, very physical game between two programs that pride themselves on that identity. Utah State has created it for years. New Mexico's trying to get back to it under Danny Gonzalez, and it's been that type of game. Very physical, a lot of big hits, some very close calls on both sides, and two quarterbacks that are getting it done with their legs, primarily. All right, so while Hall loosens up for his turn, it'll be the Aggies. And Andrew Peasley, who to improve on the way that the half ended. Boy, how close and how different the narrative would be in this game if instead of a fumble resulting in a touchback, it yes. wound up being a touchdown. Yeah, t touchdown taken away, fumbled out of the back of the end zone. Huge quick change of momentum type of play, and it was very close. And really, if you ask me, I, I, the way it was explained to us by Dean Blandino, the, the look that we had, I, I thought for sure it should have been an out-of-bounds play. Uh, their short kick. See what kind of return they get. This will be out to the 40. At some point, I know they want to avoid kicking it to Scarver, but at some point, <laughs> might want to try to kick it a little deeper, I would think. It's a pretty good starting field position for the Aggies. I believe their best starting field position tonight. And let's go back to that fumble. This is the key play of the game so far. And Peasley, once his body's out of bounds and, and he's touching that ball, he's supposed to be out uh, the left foot. But the replay officials couldn't determine whether or not the ball was still in his hand when the foot was on the ground. And the call on the field stood, which was a fumble out of the back of the end zone and a touchback on the other way for the Lobos. So first play from scrimmage of the half. Will maybe net them a yard. Noah getting the call. No gain officially on the play. And remember, it was last week that we thought we saw the third, qu uh, the third quarter New Mexico's defense oh, yeah. just come to life and really just start batting people around. Causing fumbles, taking it physically to the Air Force team. We'll see if they can do it again. Well, Utah State, they're trying to improve on what are league-worst numbers offensively. Here's McGriff on the crossing pattern. And he'll take this up near midfield, bringing up third and short. Second time they found that big body of Justin McGriff. right in front of the sticks to create a manageable third down situation. Lobo's rally to the football, make sure he doesn't cross the line. Third and one here. Griff didn't get a single touch two weeks ago against Fresno. Again, Utah State didn't play their game last week against Wyoming, wiped out due to positive tests. Third and one. And Noah. He'll dive forward and get the first down. Joey Noble brought him down. But not before a fresh set of downs for the Aggies. The contact was made in the backfield. Well, they're going to rule him short. Wow. I thought he clearly got it. It was made in the backfield. It looked like Noah kind of carried him over the line. And you see Peasley wants to stay on the field and go for it. Line against the 49. Yes, third and one. That is pretty close. Well, they're going to fake the punt. And here's Scarver. Did he get it? That is razor tight. Maybe a horse collar tackle there, too, is what it looks like they called. There's Scarver. Could have called a face mask there, too. Yeah, right on the back. That's a that's a very 
by Tony Collier. Yep. Textbook horse collar tackle. Personal foul. Horse collar tackle. Yep. Number on the defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. Yeah, good call, Petrus. Scarver might have still had the first down with the way he was kind of able to That's manipulate his body, <laughs> but spots had been have been an adventure tonight. Well, after all that, penalty yardage will put Utah State well into Lobo territory. Scarver trying to loosen up that body. It looked like a, his limbs were all pulled in different directions, like a like turkey bones. So that's what you do with your turkey? <laughs> you got to tuck those drumsticks. Here goes Peasley to the end zone. Touchdown, Aggies, Justin McGriff. And the first big shot play of the game for Utah State has tied the game. A lot of short stuff throughout the game and a couple of short passes to Justin McGriff. And then Peasley drops back, very comfortable, able to step up into the pocket and deliver it to the crime dog for a touchdown. Way to go, Justin McGriff, the junior. The most exciting play by far in this game we've had thus far as Utah State shows that Peasley can light it up a little bit down the field. Extra point away from nodding the score. So McGriff, the sophomore. With the score, 36 yards. And we are all square 13 apiece in Logan. Yeah, let's do it. Where's the dog out on the edge? Dog. It's got Skinny the post. Skinny post. Crime dog. All right, let's see where the safety goes. Could you back it up? Thunder. Feel the thunder. Yeah, that's not Okay, so there's no middle safety. The safety's way up, right? And they one-on-one -on -one coverage here. So the crime dog's just going to run a skinny post. No help over the top. Yeah, so I can explain that and just draw the crime dog. I'll, I'll, what I'll do is, uh, well, there is no, yeah, I could, would you back it up? Yeah. You do know it's McGruff. Is it? <laughs> well, yeah, but Fred McGriff was the crime dog. Oh, okay, Fred McGriff, okay. I'm... Come on, brother, why are you trying sorry. to make the world sorry, hard? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Make the world harder than it has to be. Sorry. Frighten me. <laughs> Here, hold on. Okay, so no safety in the middle of the field, right? There's nobody there. Okay, well, well, here's what I'll do. I'd like to do this. No safety in the middle of the field. The dog is just going to run a really nice skinny post. <laughs> and it's only a four-man rush. Peasley's able to deliver it. One, two, three, four, five. No, they bring an extra guy, and the back picks it up. Just like I was doing minor league baseball, and some guy like I think uh, McGraves or something was his name, and my partner just... Didn't know anything. Ah, he calls him. He's, he's the Mick. Oh, we're going to call him the Mick now. What's that? It's not Mickey Mantle. Copy. My dog. I used to do that with a, that was a guy named a, an Oregon State defensive end named Bill Swancut. And I'd be like, check out Swanee here on the old. <laughs> By the way, your, uh, your game at Boulder, Pac-12 Network. They're getting the game. Somebody better, get somebody better dust off Roxy. <laughs> Well, here's the touchdown pass from Peasley. There's nobody in the middle of the field safety-wise for New Mexico. They bring five, the Lobos, and the Aggies pick up the blitz, and you're going to see Justin McGriff on a very skinny post, the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Peasley never comes off. The first receiver sees it and delivers it with the physical mismatch. McGriff, six foot six. Very big, big target and gets down the field in a hurry to lay down the law on the Lobos D. Crime dog. <laughs> Not Fred McGriff or McGruff. Anyway, Chad Alexander 
up past the 20. <laughs> you can't say he didn't take a bite out of oh, the Lobos, no. though, can you? Oh, you have to walk out <laughs> of the booth now. All right, tie game, 13 apiece. And New Mexico will have the ball here. Trey Hall, their leading rusher, and 10 of 17 on the day. A little bit of this, a little bit of that from the Lobos quarterback. It's been his best performance uh, as a starter for this team by far. And you see the rushing yards, a really nice answer by the to the adversity right before halftime to come back and put a touchdown on the board. The Lobos have to answer now. Remember, they're on the road. Pitch play and vigilance. I sidestepped again, a couple extra yards, dodging the tackle of Keenup Miley. Stacy Collins, a defensive coordinator for Utah State, throwing a bunch of different stuff at the Lobos, but it doesn't seem like they have a very solid plan against the option. Swing pass, vigilance. And tackled in the backfield. Shaq Bond read the play the whole way. Shaq Bond. Yeah, loss of four there, a big time player and leader for Utah State. Southwestern Junior College transfer, San Diego. Used to be a baseball player out of Decatur, Illinois. But he's one of those guys who just does it right for Utah State. It's a very nice read there and creates a third and long. Top 10 Mountain West this year in tackles. Third and six, Hall, look out, Vampachan. Brings him down. And New Mexico makes it a quick series after Vankpachong's sack. Well, nobody in the backfield to pick that up. And the guard is late picking up Vankpachong, and Trey Hall never saw him. Lucky in that situation that the ball did not come loose because a huge broken play. And way to get off the field for the Aggies. Third sack of the season for Vankpachong led the Aggies in tackling against Fresno a couple weeks ago. Tyson Dyer with the punt, his first tonight. Bounces and skips at the Utah State 40 all the way down to the 31. And the Aggies have tied the game. 13 apiece, and Trey Hall says hello to A.J. Vunkbachon. A.J. Vonkbachon, much like his teammate Shaq Bond, top 10 Mountain West in solo tackles this year. Brought down the quarterback, Trey Hall, earlier. It was the penalty, the horse collar on Tony Collier, the cause, and the effect was a touchdown. Down the field to Justin McGriff, the biggest play in Andrew Peasley's young career, throwing the ball for Utah State, but the moment does not look too big for him after they lost their starter, Jason Shelley, who was dismissed from the team before this game. It's been tough trying to succeed in the shoes of Jordan Love, who became just the fifth player in school history to be selected in the first round of the NFL draft. He's the heir apparent to Aaron Rodgers. And Utah State last drive equaling or exceeding in terms of scoring output what they had the entire first half. Well, you think about this program. You think about Turban and Wagner and Kyler uh, Fackrell and the Vigil brothers, uh, not to mention Love, who we were just talking about, and Chucky Keaton, who was one of the great college quarterbacks uh, back in the 2013 era. A Utah State program that is not used to being in this position. As this ball is fumbled. On the deck, scramble for it, Aggies have it. Yards after the catch, and then the ball was coughed up. It'll wind up being a 24-yard play. Well, continuing to battle and just fight for yardage off balance, you see that room under the ball. That's Nico Bolden who forced a bunch of fumbles in the third quarter against Air Force. And he doesn't get the nod in starting these games, but as he comes off the bench, brings some energy. He's certainly involved. There's no doubt about that. And a scrum for the ball, and Henry Cole comes up with it. 
forced a pair of fumbles last week. Got another one here. Beasley dodges a tackle, hurdling his way past Nico Bolton to gain nine on the play. Beasley out of Oregon. The sophomore started this game looking good with his legs, and they call a quarterback draw. He catches a little break with a twist with Devin Sanders with his back to the hole, and he exploits it for another first down. Olsen almost second and two. Gave made in the end. Beasley's shown a fair amount of elusiveness here. Three-step draw. Beasley looking to the end zone. Caught for the touchdown. Scarver. And the Aggies have taken the lead with a pair of touchdowns to start the second half. 26-yard score for Savon Scarver. And it was Nico Bolden on the coverage, which is a mismatch either way, and Bolden goes down. Number 13 there, you see him. Clutching his leg at this, you see they're limping toward the end of that route. Well done by Peasley to recognize the mismatch A, and then the fact that Bolden was hobbled in delivering that ball perfectly for an easy score. A year that Utah State has been anemic offensively, last in the Mountain West, averaging just 11 points per game. This is a season high. 20 now. Scarver with the touchdown. And the Aggies are out in front. Fox football feast continues tomorrow. First, Nebraska, Iowa, and then we're on the call for the next one. Big game for the Axe. Stanford Cal, right in the neck, Petro. Oh, tomorrow, give him the Axe. Tomorrow, starting at 1 Eastern, only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Well, Utah State, two touchdowns in the span of about three and a half minutes. And the Aggies have jumped out in front in the second half. Scarver having a little fun there, saying he's not hearing much from the Lobo sideline after those two touchdowns wow. to start the third quarter. This is his first receiving touchdown of the year. And the Lobos will start from their own 27 on the return from Alexander. Well, not good news for New Mexico the way that the year has panned out. Again, both teams looking for their first win. New Mexico trying to end the long losing streak here. New Mexico, including these two touchdowns, for Utah State, have been outscored in the second half of games 80 to 27 this season. Danny Gonzalez has been asking for more consistency. He felt like they didn't bring it energy-wise in the first half against Air Force, but started to put it together in the second. Can they respond here? Hall fires incomplete. And you see Andrew Erickson pointing at his chest saying, my bad, he had to come back to the ball a little bit after Trey Hall had to pump fake. This is why you don't leave your feet in front of the quarterback, as you see with Shaq Bond. He loses all leverage there, and Trey Hall is able to get rid of the ball. Bottom of your picture, Dominic Tatum. I beg your pardon, that's Keena Miley. They rush four this time as Cole dives ahead for three. Third and seven coming up. And they haven't really been able to get Cole going as we see uh -oh. an Aggie down. Is that? I want to double check on the number here first. It appears to be Pokesi Vakatsua. We'll be right back. And millions of dollars have already been given away, over $3 million to be exact. Now you can get, win cash prizes yourself playing the Fox Bet Super 6 PBC Boxing Contest Saturday, December 5th. Download the Fox Bet Super 6 app for free or the big fight on foxsports.com slash PPV. Good to see Marcus Moore off the field, but not under his own power. And 
unfortunately for the Aggies, they're starting D. Lyman, graduate from Pasadena, former UCLA Bruin, is unavailable for this series. 37. And this pass is incomplete. Intended for Logan Green. Just to be sure, Kyle Stapley stapling his man to the turf. Fourth down and seven. And it'll be a punt for New Mexico. Kind of a safe call on third and seven, trying to run an inside screen. But it was diagnosed and blown up by the Aggies' defense. They've played very well in the second half, much like their offense has. Well, after just one punt in the first half, as this punt is blocked! And New Mexico will grab it, but Utah State will have a short field after the block punt. Miley got a hand to it. Yeah, Keena Miley gets back there, uh, gets through the personal protectors. There's two of them, and takes that ball off the foot and gets kicked in the head for good measure. You see the three rushers, and nobody takes Miley. The freshman out of Salt Lake City has had a big impact in this game. Physical tackle on Trey Hall on the goal line, and now a block punt. Interim head coach Frank Miley's nephew. And now Utah State with a chance to pour it on. They've scored their last two series. Beasel stepping up, trips out wide and scampers out. Gain of two. You could tell the Aggies were trying to go for it there. Dave Schramm, offensive coordinator, wanted to get another downfield throw like Peasley's been able to pull off. That was the one to Justin McGriff, the next one to Savon Scarver, and suddenly the Aggies' offense looks much more explosive than it has all year with Peasley under center as he has gotten more and more confident as this game has gone on, and he's overcome that very unfortunate mistake with the fumble and touchback out of the back of the end zone. They've come back in the third quarter with a vengeance. Looking to pass again here, and it's caught. At the 25, that's where forward progress will be stopped. Derek Wright making the grab, and the Aggies continue to click a gain of 14. Derek Wright out of Sterling, Utah, a savvy guy. They like his ability to get open. Now Peasley starting to distribute the ball to, to multiple receivers. Utah State came into this game last in the Mountain West, only averaged 111 pass yards per game tonight. They've passed for 189. And Shelley again, who had started the first four games of the season for Utah State, dismissed from the program. This is the tight end, Carson Terrell, and he is in for the score. Three unanswered touchdowns for Utah State. This a 25-yard score and the first of the season for the tight end. Well, we started to see them distribute the ball to a whole bunch of different weapons, and I was wondering, when are they going to get the tight end involved? They call a play for the tight end. As you see Terrell coming on a little drag route, breaks the tackle of Jarek Reed, and then, I don't want to say off to the races, but <laughs> he's into the end zone. 6'5", 240-pound senior at a Lehigh High School in Lehigh, Utah. Congratulations. Extra point is good. And now 21 unanswered points in five minutes and 26 seconds. Utah State looking to break a goose egg of their own. They're up big in Logan. Well, how do you get the tight end involved? You call a play for the tight end to get involved. Throw him a drag. And that's exactly what they do here to Carson Terrell. The Aggies get Peasley just a little bit on the move. Delivers it. The safety's got him sized up. Jarek Reed. But he cannot make that play. And Carson Terrell, only his second reception of the year, takes it to the house in this offensive explosion by the Aggies. They look like BYU with Ty Detmer at quarterback right now. 
Hey, don't mention BYU around these parts. It's, <laughs> uh, it's a battle. I was going to say, for, for everybody, it's a, <laughs> BYU against the world when it comes to uh, a lot of these Mountain West programs. Yeah, he had a 10-yard reception against Nevada on November 5th, and that's been it for the senior. Well, when you start to get a quarterback with confidence, you can really start to get the whole offense playing with confidence. As more guys touch the ball, people start to feel more involved, and it is an infectious thing. Look at that. Oof. Well, New Mexico has to get something going here. Last time New Mexico played a road game on Thanksgiving Day 98 years ago. It feels that long in terms of their losing streak. 13 games. I hate to harp on it, but they have been stuck in neutral. As the quarterback, Hall, gets upended on first down. Dives ahead for two. Well, Hall made the wrong cut there. He, he had that cut underneath the block uh, of Bobby Cole on Joey Noble. And he kind of turned it down and went to the outside, and that's why it would have been a five, six, seven-yard game. By gosh, there are two footballs on the field. Timeout. Football on the field. Officials time. By the way, this is the largest lead of the season for Utah State, considering they had scored more than an average of 11 points this year. It's, they've been waiting to try to get this offense going. Like you said, they've shown flashes. They had that flash. Look out here. Hall has to get away and cannot. Jacob Robinson brought him down. Third sack of the game for the Aggies. The freshman out of Orem, Utah, Jacob Robinson. They dial up his number on the blitz. Coming from the right side, a corner blitz. Hall doesn't seem to feel it or feels it a little too late. And his escape route is thwarted by Jacob Robinson. As everything has gone right for the Aggies here in the third quarter and conversely wrong for the Lobos. High snap. And Hall lost the football. It's a live ball picked up by Miley. He's going to score. Utah State with an offensive eruption. Well, they sold out on the blitz. This is even more uh, than a zero blitz that Coach Stacy Collins, the defensive coordinator, dials up. And that's Shaq Bond coming right down Broadway. And on the backside, that's Hanniger with the hand. Uh, let's see where the arm's moving and all that good stuff. Oh, that ball is out, it looks like. He's able to push it forward, but doesn't have any control over it. I think that'll stand just from seeing it right there. And what a great second half Miley has had all over the place, special teams and defensively. Dean Blandino saw the arc coming forward, but uh, what do you think? Yeah, the key is control. The hand does come forward, but the ball is loose. Prior to the hand coming forward, I think it's a good call on the field of a fumble, and it should be confirmed in replay. Tough situation there yeah. for Hall, just in the face of that blitz, but just could not get the ball out on time, and this will be a better shot of it. Yeah, right there. Strong on the wrist is Nick Henninger, the senior, who's also been very active in this game. What's usually the threshold here for a review, Dean? Or, or to, to overturn something like this? Yeah, again, the, the standard is clear and obvious, indisputable video evidence to overturn. We've already seen a couple of close calls today not get overturned. Here, to me, this one, it's clearly uh, a fumble, and the ruling on the field is correct. So there should be no reason why we should get an overturn here. Okay. Well, so for Utah State, three scores by their offense, and now a defensive touchdown pending this review. Where has this been all year in Logan? Yeah, I'm that, sure they've got to be asking that. Yeah, it feels like a real exhaling yeah. for the Aggies program here. This is what they're used to seeing here. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown.
Boy, what a great feeling for these Aggies who have been damaged by departures, by personnel changes, by COVID cancellations. And maybe they are on the way to their first win this year. Thirty four thirteen. Twenty eight points this quarter for the Aggies. Utah State with thirty four points, twenty eight of them coming in the first seven minutes and change of this quarter. And New Mexico, though they get the ball back here have got to be feeling shell-shocked. I mean, considering the way they finished the game against Air Force, considering the way they started the game today, again, had a lead at the half. But it is all gone wrong for the Lobos once again. Kick out of bounds here. We'll put it at the 35. That is quite the contrast. <laughs> And it got to feel great for Frank Miley, who's been an interim coach here when Matt Wells uh, took the job at Texas Tech. Been an interim coach here. Gary Anderson took off for Wisconsin. And now an interim coach again in this situation. A guy that understands the culture here and what this program is capable of. He's got to feel great. Along with Dave Schramm, the offensive coordinator, who's really figured out some comfortable plays for Andrew Peasley as he's developed throughout the game. Well, Hall continues to take a beating. Hit hard again here. And you see that they've very much gotten away from the game plan to start the game. Obviously, the score is, is lopsided a little bit now against New Mexico. Or remember, they were right on schedule in the first half for a lot of it, but they need to get back to Bobby Cole running the ball a little bit. If anything, just for Trey Hall's survival beyond this game. This defense is getting active and very, very malicious toward him. Both sides of the ball run this Lobos team ragged. Juggle off the handoff. Carroll corrals it and gets tripped up after crossing the line to gain. First down for New Mexico. That's a big one just to settle things down here for a little bit. 14-yard pickup. Yeah, it could have been 28, 30-yard pickup, too, if Carroll doesn't fall down because he had some blocks developing out on the edge. But a good play call to exploit the perimeter there for a guy who does have starting experience and has played more in this game, Bryson Carroll, the junior out of San Antonio. First down nearing midfield for the Lobos. And Hall, little option, cuts up field and has eight, though he got stung again up high. It's Jared Reed who was kind of going along with Hall, but Hall does it. This is how you do it. This is how you have to slow play that option. Wait, 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 fake the pitch and then cut up field. Reed was on him from the get-go, but doesn't make the tackle until it's a seven-yard gain, and Hall's still operating. Or the bumps and bruises he's taken the last two weeks, but he has stayed in there. Pick up the blitz nicely as Cole is wrestled down right away by Tate. No gain on the play, third down. Tate, really, one of the strengths of this team is the ability of those front three guys that Utah State rolls out there to play two gaps and get in the backfield and force running backs to make early decisions. It's exactly what happened there. Paul, design run, has the block, has the first down, looks upfield, gets undercut at the 30-yard line by Tatum. But Hall again, the leading rusher for the Lobos tonight. He's feeling it. Man, he is a rambling wreck going downfield, but they have this play whenever they want it. Uh, just numbers with the quarterback running the ball and the running back lead blocking. Tough at the end, 
going into Andrew Erickson, who was blocking for him. But another first down for the Lobos. Carroll in motion. Jet sweep. Carroll's going to throw. Carroll over the top. Touchdown, New Mexico. And for the second time this year, Bryson Carroll with a passing touchdown. Andrew Erickson hauls in a 28-yard grab, and the Lobos have life. Really good call setting up Bryson Carroll. They've run this in the first half. They ran it in the second half. And here it comes to the other side, to the right, because that's a right-handed player. And the trick play dialed up perfectly. Andrew Erickson had to wait for it a little bit. Tough to deliver with a glove on for a tailback but well executed by the Lobos, and they get themselves back in the game. And you can see the smiles on the sideline just seeing a trick play come to fruition. Yes, sir. Ran that exact play against Nevada to perfection back on November 14th. Executed well once again here. It's Erickson. It's a Lobos touchdown. And they trail by 14. Well, here's the trick play, Alex. You're going to see Bryson Carroll coming here, and he'll receive the ball. And that's the receiver who's going to get it. You're going to see Erickson just lost. Everybody thinks that Carroll is coming to run the ball with a convoy going to the right, just like they did to the left a little bit earlier in the drive. They set up the protection. Carroll sets his feet and delivers, well, not a great ball, but it was good enough <laughs> and well called by the Lobos. Another pooch here. Just trying to keep it away from Scarver. That's been the strategy all night. And Terrell, tight end, will pick it up. This was after that play. Quarterback Trey Hall getting some attention. He's been beaten up tonight, and that does that looks really bad. Yeah, it might have been on the previous uh, run. I think it was the uh, the second. Oof. Uh, to last play out there for the New Mexico offense and, and looked like he took a few shots too many in the run game as he's attended to in the Lobos tent. Well, while that takes place, Andrew Peasley in the Utah State offense back on the field. They had 45 points in 240 minutes of play, first four games. That was coming into the night. 28 points in the third quarter alone. OK. But now, New Mexico, remember it was their defense that turned things around against Air Force. Danny Gonzalez telling us, boy, if their defense, if they made enough plays, they'd be back in the game. Well, this is another situation. They trailed Air Force by multiple scores. And the defense has really been peppered here in the third quarter. They have a chance to turn it around. Their offense just took it to the zone for them. Oh, play action, shovel pass. That is ruled incomplete. This is where it gets interesting for Rocky Long. He's got to make a call to get his defense off the field in a third and long situation. He's got to worry about Andrew Peasley, who's a running quarterback, and they have been gashed down the field a couple times. What does Rocky call here? He's dealt with this situation probably about 400,000 times in his career. Yeah, no doubt. Beasley fires, incomplete. And for a Lobos team that is last in the Mountain West in third down defense, they force a three and out, and all of a sudden, the complexion of this game has changed in the waning moments of the third quarter. And that was Rocky's call. Uh, he brought uh, about five guys that looked like maybe six. One of them dropped off as he's consulting Danny Gonzalez right now, and they confused Peasley, forced the incomplete pass, and, and Long got him off the field with a good defensive call. First punt of the game for Utah State. And the Lobos will start deep in their own territory. Logan Green 
unable to take it out. So a minute 43 left in the third quarter, 47-yard punt. Now what can New Mexico do offensively? Well, I'm sure Danny's asking behind that mask to his mentor, Rocky Long, what chances he thinks he has of corralling that Aggies offense in the fourth quarter, because what an explosion they had in the third. What can New Mexico's offense do? Well, we're seeing a different quarterback, yeah. that's for one. Connor Geno will head out there. Boy, that did not look good with Trey Hall coming off the field. Bobby Cole gets the handoff here. He gets four on first down. We'll have to watch this situation. Former walk-on, Nathaniel Jones, I beg your pardon, got the carry there on first down. That's Red not played freshman. this season, yep. It's a freshman out of Santa Fe Springs, California. Second down, it's Jones again. Bring up third and short. Boy, if they, they can get these running backs going, that would be a huge boon for the Lobos. Well, without Trey Hall, it really limits things. Uh, remember, they're already with their second stringer and Trey Hall, Tavaka Tuioti. Not on the trip, he is their starter. Third and two. And we have a flag here. I'm gonna say offsides. Offside, number 92. Wow. Defense with contact. Five yard penalty result in a first down. Well, if you're Utah State, you got a third string quarterback in for your opponent, any penalty at this stage of the game with New Mexico having just scored is a gift. Yeah, it's Motu Apuaka who came across and now Ganahl with an opportunity to stay on the field. Last year, New Mexico lost Brand Hughes in the preseason. He was their presumed opening day starter. This is Carroll. And he'll get four on first down. That might take us to the end of the quarter. Player down for New Mexico. This is... Okay, Ashinuga, the left guard, backup left guard for the Lobos. We saw him get a lot of significant time last week. Nice to see him getting off under his own power. Coach Gonzalez now really between a rock and a hard place without Trey Hall available right now. You really wonder what is in Ganahl's arsenal to keep the Lobos in this game. They already had to get creative to score that last touchdown. So Ashinuga comes off hobbling a bit. Clock starts. We'll see if they run a play. Second and six from the New Mexico 29. They will run one more play. It's a quarterback keeper, a little option play. And Janal will get within a couple yards of the line to gain. It'll be a third and short for the Lobos when we come back. Both teams looking for their first win this season. Utah State with an offensive eruption in the third quarter. New Mexico scoring late to make it a game. We head to the fourth in Logan, Utah. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Rocket Mortgage. Late into the night in Logan, Utah. This is moments ago. Trey Hall, boy, he has been. Between last week against Air Force, and that's like fighting a war, this week he's been pummeled by the Utah State Aggies. Third string quarterback is in for the Lobos, Connor Janal. From the New Mexico 33 on third and short. They're not going to get there. Forward progress may have been stopped at the line of, game, or at the line of scrimmage, rather. 
Miley, what a game he's had. Yeah, he's been unbelievable in this second half. Meaning I can't believe how much he's been playing. Yeah. <laughs> he's like their third string or second string inside linebacker, but he's shown up on special teams, shown up all over defensively, that time making a big stop on fourth and two and forcing a punt as New Mexico really struggling with Janal under center and not Trey Hall. Dyer with the punt. And dodging a tackle here is Jordan Nathan, ridden out of bounds at the 35-yard line. We'll step aside. 39-yard punt, six-yard return. Aggies with the ball, up 14. Well, Utah State, they're down to a backup quarterback. Andrew Peasley, well, he's been slinging the ball around the yard, though, hasn't he? In the third quarter, he decided that he didn't want to run it anymore. They started to get him really comfortable delivering the ball and distributing it to many weapons, culminating with Carson Terrell, the tight end, for a rumbling touchdown. Hmm. It's like they found their guy. <laughs> They may have found their guy in both aspects. Peasley has now rushed for north of 35 yards, 15-yard pickup there. Actually, he's up to 41 of the day, passing for 214. Both are career highs. Coach Miley was very, very confident about his team, about the mentality in the locker room, about them remaining together. If you read the stories, it did feel a little bit like the program was coming apart at the seams, but Utah State said that is not the case. Coach Miley, that's not the case, and you see the performance so far with Peasley, and you have to say, they look pretty together. Peasley to the outside, into the flat. The catch made by McGriff, he lost the ball! Lobos have it! And another twist in the plot. Joey Noble, or rather Jake Saltonstall, the sophomore from Morgan Hill, California, with the recovery. Well, Justin McGriff's been pretty productive, but you just hold the ball out there like it's nothing, and it, it's you can't hold it like you're Walter Payton anymore. It just doesn't work that way. Tavian Combs is the guy that comes and knocks it out, and that is a mistake by Justin McGriff with ball security that led to that play. A nice throw by Peasley, who's looked better and better throwing the ball, but another forced fumble by Rocky Long's defense in the second half. Salton Stahl comes up with it. Combs has been so productive as a freshman this year. A misdirection here, end around, and Logan Green goes nowhere. It was Carroll getting a Wildcat snap, and the play was blown up by Shaq Bond. Yeah, it was a kind of wonky looking reverse from the start, but but once Carroll was able to kind of make that pitch, it looked like it was gonna go, and Shaq Bond saw it and eliminated it. I've been very impressed with the senior out of Decatur. Loss of nine as Janal looks to get away and gets rid of it. Looking for a flag here on a late hit. There is a flag on the play, but it was well away from the ball. Yeah, Justice Tae was the D lineman applying pressure who knocked the shoe off. It's going to go against New Mexico anyway. So the penalty, whatever it was, we didn't get an audible announcement of what it was, was declined. It is a third down and 17 for the Lobos. Janal throws incomplete. And Ume crossing over the middle. And it's a three and out for New Mexico. And that first play set him back and kind of eliminated their options. Absolutely, and, and they didn't rush 
many guys. They had two linebackers just kind of spying on Janal there. Here's Dyer already on a punt block tonight. Gets this one off cleanly. And Nathan from his own 40. He gets brought down after a three-yard return. Utah State up by a pair of scores. Saturday, Texas Tech takes on 23rd ranked Oklahoma State at noon Eastern on Fox over on FS1. Justin Fields leads number four Ohio State against Illinois. Both games are Saturday, noon Eastern on Fox and FS1 streaming live on the Fox Sports app. A couple big games this weekend. Got the big game, Stanford Cal, and how about San Jose State? They have a legit chance to win the Mountain West this year. A surprise on the West Coast, Coach Brennan's guys. Utah State looking to pour it on here. As this pass is incomplete, intended for Scarver. Throw it into double coverage there, did Peasley. But this is all good stuff for Coach Schramm's offense. Coach Dave Schramm came into this not knowing it, who was going to run the ball as Jalen Warren was out this game. That was a surprise to a lot of people. Big star, Utah High School star, JC star, not available. Henry Coles run the ball well. Peasley's dead, done fabulously. False start here against the Aggies. Should be at least. Ball start, number 58, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. It is Dimitri Aleki Foa, a senior from San Leandro, California. He's been one of their leaders, a quiet leader offensively, but a leader for that side of the ball, Coach Miley told us. And on the other side of the ball, he told us it was Shaq Bond who's performed very well in this game for the defense of the Aggies. This is another stout defensive play. It'll be a gain of two here for the Aggies, but Chadrick Lowry Jr. took what was going to be a catch in the flat and ended it right away. Lowry is a, another JC transfer. There's a lot of them on this Lobos team from College of the Canyons which is in Southern California, their head coach, a former New Mexico Lobo, Ted Isenda, got a good relationship with Coach Gonzalez and Rocky Long. Beasley, as a whole, escapes a tackle and steps out. All right, so here's the question for me. Throw it a couple times. They're up by two scores. Their third string quarterback, your opponent's third string quarterback, is in the game. And now you punt it back to him here. This is a sequence for Utah State that uh, they were unable to run clock. Yeah, and it feels like Utah State is up by more yeah. because New Mexico's quarterback is out of the game and they've looked pretty rough offensively since that moment. But you're right, uh, not running any clock. It was really the deep play on first down that they thought they could really deliver a knockout punch. It went incomplete, and now the Lobos with another shot. Only 14-point game. Let's see what this turn will be. It is a punt downed all the way at the New Mexico 13. Is there one more push in the Lobos? All right, Nick Henniger has made some big plays for Utah State tonight. Oh, you could say he's the defensive player of the game. Uh, tackle for loss there, batted that ball down. Another Ooh. very physical meeting in the backfield with Bobby Cole. Affects that throw and then forces this fumble. The one-on-one -on -one matchup against Cade Briggs. What a performance by the young man from South Jordan, Utah, Bingham High School. 
Had a career game against San Diego State earlier in the season. So now New Mexico down to their third string quarterback. It appears that so at least in the first couple of plays we've seen that they're going to have more success running the ball than throwing. Yeah, Connor Ganahl, I mean, he is a thrower. He's 6'5", 213, but they, they're trying to run the same game plan they had in for Hall. That's a nice catch for Andrew Erickson. Close to the line to gain. They'll mark him a half yard short. If you want to get a quarterback comfortable, move him and have him throw it to a reliable receiver. And that's exactly the play that was just called by Derek Wareheim, the offensive coordinator in the Lobos. Trying to get Janal. a little bit more fluid in this game plan, which Trey Hall executed quite well until yeah. he was knocked out of the game. No doubt. no doubt. They did give him the first down. As this pass is complete to Marcus Williams, the tight end. Nearing midfield, New Mexico may have second life with their third string QB. Marcus Williams has been the best tight end on the roster in Albuquerque for a while. And that ball flew out of the hand of Janal there. That was a pretty impressive throw out there to the edge to the left. Maybe we shouldn't read too much into small sample sizes. 24-yard catch. And off on first down. It's Carroll. And Carroll has a seam. Bryson Carroll down the sideline and ripped out at the Utah State 15. Well, coming across the formation, these plays for Bryce and Carroll, and they did throw a halfback pass out of it, has been very successful part of the Lobos offense to the left and to the right. Shaq Bond had to clean that up, or he was going to take it to the house. New life for the Lobos, howling at the moon. Here's Carroll. And Carroll gets four on first down. He could have had eight. I mean, yeah. he wasn't even touched uh, until he got to that contact. Well done by Isaac Gutierrez, the right guard. They got a really good push with their interior there, and that enabled Carroll to put his foot in the ground and get some positive yardage. That really helps out this second and six. This young quarterback, there's a good look at Isaac Gutierrez, sophomore out of Eureka, California. Vigilant checks into the game to the right of Connor Janal on second and six. Janal, option pitch. Oh, Janal got clobbered. Vigilant is frustrated with the yardage, but there may be a bigger situation at hand. Well, they, they've run a lot of quarterback run, a lot of quarterback option, and their quarterbacks have paid the price. Janal steps up here to Oof. force the pitch. And that is a big hit. I think it was Dominic Tatum yeah. that came and made the hit. And that guy's a runner. I mean, he's running with the ball. He's not standing back there throwing it. And, man, did he snap him back. I don't want to. Personal foul. Targeting. Yeah. Number 23. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. All right, so here's the previous play is under further review. Where I want to get a little more clarification because I think it may be confusing to, to folks watching at home. Okay, maybe he's a runner, but Dean, okay, what, where does the definition of target? attack his head, right? That's the that right. they're going to define it, and and you could say he either attacked it with his head or his arms. I'm not sure, Dean. What do you say? Yeah, well, he he is a runner, but then he's he throws a backward pass. He's in a passing posture at this point. And you'll see the defender, he's going to attack, drive his shoulder into the head neck area. You've got to stay off the head neck area in that situation. Try to try to lower the target. So again, tough when you have a, a player running that option, but he is in a passing posture at that point. He is considered defenseless, and that forcible contact to the head neck area um, is a foul. Now the quarterback is six foot five there, Dean, and it looked like uh, you know he went down on his knees uh, right before the hit, and, and and you know it's pretty hard there for Tatum to size that up. But a violent hit like that, I mean, that's going to draw a flag. See how he ends up really low? Yeah, I mean, there's no question that that's hard. Your your target area could be good initially, right? But the level change doesn't really impact the call. You've got to stay off the head neck area. 
Here's the official word. The ruling on the field of targeting is confirmed. Number 23 is disqualified. So Dominic Tatum, who's made an impact in this game for Utah State, is done with 8.13 to go. So, Dean, you're, you're good with keeping the call on the field targeting. I am. It, it, again, it's a tough one for the defense, but we're trying to get those hits to the head neck area out of the game, and that's what this rule is intended to do. It's not always perfect, but I do agree with the call. All right. So it's a first and goal. That's just really tough for me. The guy's six foot six, and he, he ends up on his knees. It looked to me like Tatum was trying to hit him in the chest, force the pitch. That's what you're coached to do in the option. But of course, we are trying to remove those hits, just like Dean said, and that's how they do it. And you know, they really have over the years. You know, we've seen football change because of calls like these, whether you like them or not. Cole on first and goal, stops short of the goal line. As Henninger preventing a Lobo score, second and goal to go. It'll be inches away from the goal line. James Hansen in there as well. Good job by Hansen, filling that play up, keeping the clock running. But the Lobos are really threatening, as it looks like Connor Janal, not too affected by that big hit back in the game, and about to make this a one-score game. From the one, Cole, no. Hansen, Vonkbachan, all there. That's Henniger, 42 on the legs. Look at Henniger. That's why he doesn't score. Henniger gets down onto the legs of Cole. Going quickly. Cole this time punches it in. And the Lobos with back-to-back -back scores. Bobby Cole, leading rusher for the Lobos on the season. His second touchdown tonight. Well, they needed Bobby Cole to finish this drive with a touchdown and with attitude, and he does both of those quite well. Targeting penalty, a beautiful deep throw by Janal, the third-string quarterback for the Lobos, and it's a one-score game again if Murphy, Donovan Murphy can make this. He does, and it is a seven-point game. Into the fourth quarter in Utah. One of these teams has to get in the win column. Pep talk on the Utah State sideline. This game looked like it was all but in hand for the Aggies. Yeah, Frank Miley, who is the defensive line coach and a very reputable defensive line coach here and coordinator in college football, getting his D-line tuned up a little bit on the sideline. Did not like seeing Janal, the third string quarterback, lead that drive and get the Lobos back into this game. All right, so Janal puts on the headset. And now the Aggies. Well, again, I'll go back to their last series. Threw the ball a couple of times. Didn't run off much clock. Seven plus minutes, one score game. Scarver takes it a yard deep from his own end zone. And Scarver slips a tackle, but is shoved out of bounds after forward progress gets him to the 22. You know, all that good stuff that you did when you were in the third quarter, if you're an Aggie, doesn't mean much if you're not able to close the door on the Lobos here in the fourth quarter. And, and there's Coach Schramm, the offensive coordinator there, standing right next to Peasley, Dave Schramm. He knows that. Uh, he knows what you just pointed out, Alex. That last series was really hurtful to the Aggies. They didn't run any clock. They put their defense in a bad position. It'll be very interesting to see what the play calling is for Coach Miley's offense here to help out the defense as they've been put in an adverse situation in the fourth quarter. Leading rusher has been their quarterback, Beasley. They'll hand it off. Sweep to Noah. And the freshman gets three on first down. David Combs making the tackle. Good start to the drive by Noah, falling forward, about a three-yard gain. You see this defense embattled 
by the Lobos. This is the side of the ball that Coach Long and Coach Gonzalez, the head coach, they, they want this to be the identity of New Mexico football going forward, and they are fighting for that. What's coming? Beasley picks up on it and will run to the sideline. I believe he stepped out a half yard short. They will give him the first down. I like Peasley's speed when he decides to tuck it. He does have a little bit of an extra kick, a little bit of an extra gear. They couldn't tackle him there. Yeah, running room. Peasley with 57 yards on the ground. Henry Cole, second leading rusher for the Aggies, has 31. No gain here on first down as Noah gets another carry. Now here's another opportunity for Rocky Long, second and long situation to start to try to work some magic and get the Lobos off the field. You see Coach Schramm working on the other sideline. That's the chess match now as the seconds tick off. Can Rocky get New Mexico another shot with the football for Janal? There's Noah. He'll barrel ahead and get five on the play. Third down and middle yardage to go. Interesting that they're trusted Noah. Just a true freshman, La Mesa, California with the ball at this critical stage in the game. Speaks a lot to how much they respect him. I think you'd see Henry Cole in this situation if he's healthy. Big third down now. It's huge. Utah State four of nine tonight. Can the Lobos defense get off the field? Peasley gets out of it. Peasley scrambling. Peasley has the first down and more. Andrew Peasley crosses back across the field and he's in. 62 yards. Is that the knockout blow? Well, I didn't know he was this fast. You're going to see Cameron Miller sky and get cut down and almost get to the feet of Peasley, but he's able to scamper out, and I didn't know he was that fast and that nifty on his feet. What a jump move, and then really fabulous awareness to take it down the middle of the field. That's the play of the game for Peasley. What a run. That's the play of the game for Utah State. Have they? Cinched it up, re-establishing a two-possession lead. Andrew Peasley has done it all tonight for the Aggies. We were talking to the New Mexico coaches earlier this week, Petros. The one thing they were worried about was Peasley's ability to scramble. Yeah, and he can do that. First of all, really well done by Noah to recognize the blitz, get in front of his quarterback, and cut down Cameron Miller enough. And the rest is Peasley. That is really impressive. To see somebody on the ground going for your feet and to be able to pick up your legs, tiptoe through the tulips, and then get to that opposite hash and score. That is a guy whose legs you really have to look at, and all the opponents are going to be shuddering watching that play. That is not fun as a deep coordinator to try to take care of a guy like that. Taken out by Logan Green to the 20. All right, well, here's a historical note for you. That is only the fourth time since 1996 that a Utah State quarterback has gone over 100 yards rushing in a game. And Rocky Long hates to see it. There's no doubt about it. I thought he had a good blitz dialed up, and it really did look like Cameron Miller was going to get home. But a really, really impressive job of awareness by a true freshman in blitz pickup by Noah 
who came around and got a piece of him, and it sprang Peasley. Play of the game, like you said, Alex. Patterson on first down. Clock moves inside of four minutes to go. The Lobos down by two scores once again. And they want to get set up quickly here. Janal throws across his body, incomplete, intended for Andrew Erickson. Starting to see a little bit about what the Lobos were really worried about with this Utah State defense, which is guys like Justice Tae beating double teams and getting to the quarterback, just like he did there, forcing the scramble of the incomplete pass. This Aggies D looks looks like Utah State defenses that I've seen in the past against the Lobos. Well, all the numbers this year were just gaudy. Right? As in the flat, Patterson slipped the first tackle, written down on the second one. Oakley Hussey making the tackle. 20-yard pickup, clock moving. 315 and counting to go. Janal slings it near side incomplete. Intended for Patterson once again. There are some tired faces for the Lobos. It's been a tiring season. Marooned in Lake Las Vegas. That's their home base, their training ground. They play at UNLV's old home turf, Sam Boyd Stadium. UNLV does their laundry it's twice a week. Pretty remarkable, but it is a great story. But they they don't they don't care so much about the story anymore after all these weeks. They want a victory, but they'll never forget this year. There's no doubt about it. Should be pass interference, and it is. <laughs> Tackle was made <laughs> well before the ball even got there. Michael and Yahoo. Sophomore from Covina, California. And yeah, this will give New Mexico. We're still hanging around here. I was going to say, they're giving them something to work with here. Pass interference, number 22, defense. Spot file, automatic, first down. Let's take a look at how tough it's been for the Logo Lobos just to get back in the win column. Dating back to last season. And a win against New Mexico State. That was the last road win as well two years ago. So stop the clock. Vigilant scampering out of bounds. Five-yard pickup, second and five coming up. It has been very difficult. They, they are... In it for the long haul, Danny Gonzalez and, and Rocky Long in New Mexico. Both of them played there, decorated players. Rocky's the mentor of Danny. Janal throws off his back foot, and it's picked off. Well, for Utah State, at some point, you figured that their defense was going to cinch this up. Oakley Hussey. Coming up with the interception. It's a five-man rush with a spy, and it's still thrown into double coverage. And Hussey goes over there in support and comes up with it. High points the ball like you're supposed to as a DB. And is that the last gasp for the Las Vegas Lobos? Lake Las Vegas Lobos. Yes. They got three Not more exactly weeks. the strip, but yeah. and he's, the coaches, the players haven't seen their families in weeks but Andrew Peasley how they be able to see his family maybe in the stands after the game after a career day 226 yards through the air 118 rushing and perhaps the Aggies have found their quarterback of the future only a sophomore looks like it to me good size kid La Grande Oregon La Grande Oregon High School you know all those people are proud of him. This was the play of the game. Just really nifty feet. And really 
impressive awareness of field geography in the moment. You know, that's hard when your helmet's all bobbling around and guys are after you and you're breathing all hard. To be able to do those things and to be that precise is really impressive, especially for this young man in his first real hardcore action for the Aggies. Congrats to him, the head coach, Frank Miley, and Dave Schramm, the OC, for bringing the young man along. And check out the crime dog. Look what he's got. <laughs> yeah, he had the fumble, but uh, Justin McGriff, big target for Peasley. Didn't have a single touch last week or two weeks ago against Fresno State. McGriff. What a day for the Utah State offense. 45 points all season coming into the night. 41 tonight. We talk about the losing streak for New Mexico and how bad it's been. Utah State, they've been one of the top programs in the Mountain West the last couple of years. This is their longest losing streak in four seasons. They lost Jordan Love. They lost running back Gerald Bright. Eight players made their first career start in their opener. They've had players leave the program. You were talking about a couple that entered the transfer portal. If they can put together something in the last couple games here, they've got to feel good with everybody coming back, theoretically, with the extra year of eligibility to, to start the rebuild a little bit early. Well, they're not a program that's struggling. I mean, they are this year. But you look at their foundation and, and guys like Frank Miley, they know what they're doing. And they put players uh, in a good position, and they have for a long time. New Mexico, on the other hand, there's a reason that Danny Gonzalez and Rocky Long are there. They're there to resurrect the program. So they really are on, on different paths. But Utah State's got to feel great about the way that they performed in this one because of all the adversity they faced this year, whether it's game cancellations, Jason Shelley's dismissal, miss, dismissal, Gary Anderson, who came back last year to great fanfare, took him to a bowl game, suddenly dismissed. Uh, just a lot of hills and gullies for these guys. New Mexico down to their last time out here. And they will use it. By the way, one, one other shout out too. We've talked about coaches and players from New Mexico who haven't seen their families in a while, especially around Thanksgiving. The SID, Frank Mercogliano, who puts together the, the game notes. He, uh, he's super helpful with organizing everything. You know, the, all the video conference calls during the week, uh, making sure that everybody's accessible and doing a great job and tough circumstances with the program. They, they really have done a, a great job. And when the story's told about New Mexico football in 2020, the wins and losses will be one part of the story. The other part of the story is the Herculean effort by the administration, guys like the SID of getting all these guys their games in. Far away from home. Yep. Utah State, who hadn't played a game on Thanksgiving, since 1973, lost at Southern Miss. And today, getting a rare chance to play on Turkey Day. Look like they're about to get into the win column for the first time this season. And it's got to feel good. You know, there's so much that you have to go through, all of us these days, of course. But for these young people, so much they have to go through just to get onto the field. And it feels like a victory when you're able to kick the game off. But to be able to pull it out and win and do it together, it's going to be a big celebration in Logan tonight. After a really tough year. Oh, yeah. 11-2 last season. Let's not, or 11-2 in 2012, uh, just a couple years ago under Gary Anderson. Last year, 7-6. Yeah, Jordan Love slinging the ball around. And, and this Utah State program that's been on the map in the Mountain West for several years now. Entering a new phase, but first win this season for interim head coach Frank Miley. And the first win for Andrew Peasley. Maybe the quarterback of the future for this Aggies team. Hoping he doesn't have to kneel down one more time. He will. And for New Mexico, they will go to 0 5 in the season. It will be 14 straight losses. And I'm not sure how they're going to characterize this. Yeah. Uh, Coach Gonzalez said he felt like his team was soft. We talked about it in the first half against Air Force. And he really challenged them. And they played better in the second half. 
This one, same as usual for New Mexico. Flashes here and there, but they just have a hard time figuring out how to win, and that can be the case when it's been a while. Well, it's been a while for this program. Longest losing streak in four years, and the Utah State Aggies, their first win on Thanksgiving Day since 1954. Congratulations to Coach Miley and the Aggies in their first W of the season. They will have Air Force next. And Utah State can celebrate a couple extra days off with the holiday in the win column tonight. 41-27 the final score for Petros Papadakis and our entire Fox Sports crew. This is Alex Faust bidding you a good evening and happy Thanksgiving. Good night from Logan, Utah.